following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. On a wintry night, a hot-blooded rematch for Big Ten East Supremacy. The reigning champs from Michigan State look to make a strong playoff statement tonight. So do the Buckeyes, who come calling for revenge in the Big Ten, on a big stage, under the bright lights. Mythology has grown from the brawn and blue-collar battles of the Big Ten. And these two schools are titans in it. Their last encounter was the conference championship a year ago. I've had this game circled personally since the minute I stepped off that field last year. Now everybody was doubting us, and we know we can go out there and play this game. But we have to take this one in order to get where we need to get. A lot's at stake. We know they're coming for us, and we're coming for them. I'm not afraid to take a step. confirm it and to prove who's the best in the Big Ten for the playoffs. This is a new year, new dreams. For pride. We're still chasing our success. For proof on Saturday Night Football. And welcome to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. The Big Ten's long-awaited showdown Saturday night arrives dressed appropriately in parkas, hats, and gloves. Already, important things have happened with the playoff bracket out a month from today. Contenders like Baylor and Arizona State have made strong statements to the committee. Auburn has suffered a second loss. Florida State finds itself in a battle. And this game is a big part of that playoff chase. Welcome, Chris Fowler and Kirk Kerbstreet. You're fans of the sport. This is a special night. This is a big part of it. In a conference that's starved for respect, Kirk, Michigan State can sort of reinforce what the committee thinks. Ohio State can reshape it. No question about it, but I think if you talk to Urban Meyer and Mark D'Antonio on the field right now, this is about tonight. Yep. This is about trying to be able to put the right foot forward and try to get ahead in this division and try to get to Indianapolis and win a Big Ten championship. And think about that down the road. Meanwhile, an Ohio State offense tonight that scores quickly and scores often faces a stout Michigan State defense in a tough environment. Well, this is where we're going to learn a lot more about Ohio State's offense because obviously they're going up against a much better defense. Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, plays a lot of man-to-man -man on the outside. They call it building a wall with their defensive line and linebackers attacking downhill. You can see it there. Amir Abdullah, one of the top backs in the country, nowhere to go. That's what Ohio State will face when they run the football. And then if Michigan State gets you to third down, they're very creative. They give you a lot of different looks. They love to blitz you, try to put the quarterback in the offensive line in a very tough position. So for the Buckeyes, the big thing for them will be avoiding third and long. They need to have success on first and second down, try to get to the third and manageable situations to help that line and J.T. Barrett. Yeah, J.T. Barrett faces a big test. Connor Cook from Michigan State has passed some big tests, but he's got this guy to worry about. He's got to worry about Joey Bosa. He's come on as one of the top defensive ends in the country. Amazing hands. And look how he gets skinny here with the pressure and athletic ability to close in on the quarterback to get home so they don't always have to blitz here's against Penn State four-man pressure there's the power throwing the back right into the backfield so tonight against a very balanced attack from Michigan State first thing Ohio State's gonna try to do is slow down the running game with an aggressive linebacking crew and the safety's coming downhill they're gonna leave their corners on an island Joey Bosa has got to get pressure for the Buckeyes to hold up against the Spartans on the road Buckeyes good road team they won 11 straight the Spartans have won 14 in a row in the Big Ten Eastern Division Supremacy and a lot more at stake tonight here at East Lansing. The Nissan pregame rush is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Mr. Football, something you'd like to share? Yeah, this is silly. We all know how to say bowl game. Play off. Bowl game? Play bowl. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. 
John Saunders, Danny Cannell, and Coach Mac Brown. Playoff, yes, the playoff has already started. They may be down to the last four teams in January, but guess what? Week to week, six matchups today with ranked teams on both sides of the ball. This is a fumble. Nick Marshall trying to hand it off as they were going in for a touchdown to take the lead, but they get it back. Can't control the snap and lose. Crazy finish to this game. You see the center snaps it up. Texan M wisely jumps on it. One person on this set called this upset, and it wasn't the coach or the former player. <laughs> oh, nice of you to give me that one. Danny Cannell, when you're in a Florida State uniform, you look like this, right? Uh, never. Jameis Winston to the end zone. Oh, he had another incredible first half so far. Florida State looks like they're taking control of the game. Notre Dame against Arizona State, and Coach Everett Golson was the key. You said they got to get to him, and they did, turning the ball over. A very tough day for a Notre Dame team that fought back hard, but give credit to Arizona State and their defense. They kept him in the pocket and forced turnovers to win the game. It's a blowout. TCU against K-State. Trevon Boykin looking for David Porter. Gets it down to the two and sets up a Boykin touchdown. TCU's banged up on offense. Doesn't matter with that guy under, under center at quarterback. He is a really good football player, and he's going to be a guy that's tough for Kansas State to stop tonight. So if the playoff has started, then who walks out of tonight's game, Ohio State, Michigan State, a winner? I think Michigan State's the best team in the Big Ten. I think they prove it tonight. Ohio State's young, Michigan State's old, old beat young tonight uh, at East Lansing. It's relative. Well, not that old <laughs> compared to three guys Older. sitting up here. We'll see you at halftime right now. Let's return to Chris Fowler. Chris. The words on the wall ask, can you hear them? They are waiting. And the Spartans greeted by their crowd. They have not beaten Ohio State here since 1999. And the Buckeyes get payback. Will the Spartans reaffirm their status as Big Ten top dogs? Kickoff from East Lansing is coming up next. But first, a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. This has been the pregame rush. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. just above freezing. The wind chill makes it just below freezing, but no chance of precip tonight. Heather Cox with a ringside seat for this rumble. She's with Urban Meyer. Chris, thanks so much. Coach, tonight you face a team that ended your national championship hopes a year ago and what many are calling an elimination game. What have you said to your team about what's at stake tonight? This kind of game's all about preparation. It's against a very good team, and we're a very good team. So it's about uh, the fundamentals of winning a game in these kind of games never changes. It's the line of scrimmage and take care of the ball. You have a freshman quarterback in JT Barrett that's also dealing with a sore knee. What do you need from him tonight in this environment? He needs to manage a great game today. You know, they're very good on defense but there's weaknesses to any defense. Identify the weakness and manage the game. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Urban. Meyer's last visit here was his first Big Ten win and first road win a couple of years ago. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Whether you're going for it from a few yards out or from miles away, go with the tire with superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Urban Meyer pumped up on the field beforehand. Mark D'Antonio, all business, but his team extra inspired and a pregame smile from Dino, who has deep roots in Ohio. That might be the last smile of the night. <laughs> he got that one out of the way early before the kick. Got a look there at JT Barrett. Buckeyes, fast starting offense, will get the football first. Michigan State won the toss and deferred until the second half. A lot to deal with. 
for a redshirt freshman quarterback who's filling Braxton Miller's big shoes this season. Kevin Cronin with the kickoff. Don Trey Wilson at the goal line. Driven out at the 25. JT Barrett's knee feels okay against Penn State in that double overtime win, Kirk. He tweaked it and just played through pain very well. Well, they thought at halftime that might be it. They thought he may have to shut it down, but he showed a lot of courage and toughness in leading Ohio State to a win. And in overtime, actually put the team on his back and ran the football despite that MCL sprain. I think he earned a lot of respect from his teammates based on the way he played in that game and the toughness that he played with. Big Ten total offense leader, number one in passing efficiency. Empty backfield on the first play. Barrett rolls, short throw, near side. Catch made by Devin Smith, who's the big play threat. A gain for a first down. The Knights Chick-fil-A impact players, Kirk. Well, you start with Taylor Decker. Big night for the Ohio State offensive line. The only starter from a year ago has to provide leadership and give JT time. Dontre Wilson, you'll see him tonight. And the Michigan State defense will put a lot of pressure on him. They fake it to Ezekiel Elliott. Barrett comes out firing. Completion again to Smith in two plays. The Buckeyes are in Michigan State territory. Well, Ohio State on the aggressive here early with the first couple plays. They moved the pocket on the first play. Here, attack the mid-range of the Michigan State defense, and that's something that they feel that JT Barrett has a very good feel for against this style of defense from the Spartans. Another throw, Barrett far side, this time batted down. Ohio State has scored in its opening possession six consecutive games. Marcus Rush, Ohio native from Cincinnati Moeller, fourth year that he's been playing for the Spartans, got his hand up on that football. And when you can't get the pass rush to a quarterback, you got to knock it down. That's what he was able to do there. But the Buckeyes, again, aggressive with the kick, quick throws against the man-to-man -man coverage for the Spartans. There's a flag. It's a free play. The Spartans jump into the neutral zone, but Barrett escapes and darts inside the 42-yard line. It looked like Joel Heath, 92, may have jumped a little bit early. It's a very good Michigan State defensive front. Defensive ends, you mentioned Rush, Shalik Calhoun. Their job to contain Barrett on those zone replays. That's right. All side. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. The defense is so eager in the early going. Yeah, and it's it, you know one of the things about playing in on the road in an environment like this, it's tough to play against a defense that thrives on creating pressure and confusion. Is take the fight to them. Sometimes it, you know Tom Herman and Urban Meyer and this offensive staff, they have a lot of experience on the staff, a lot of film study, a lot of preparation to get ready for this defense. And it's interesting here early, quick up to the line and attacking the Spartans defense. Second and five play. Barrett looks far side. Another accurate dart just short of the first down marker is Michael Thomas, top receiver on the team. When you play Michigan State, it puts a lot of pressure because of how much man-to-man -man coverage that they play. The receiver's got to be able to get separation, meaning Michael Thomas, Devin Smith, Dontre Wilson, Jalen Marshall, Evan Spencer. You see a lot of defensive backs in their face. Pat Narduzzi's adjustment to this up-tempo is he's tightening up his coverage. There's Pat. Tightening up his coverage and taking away the cushion from the receivers. How about this look, Kirk? Empty backfield on third and a half yard. Iron on the tight end, motions in. Barrett with the keeper. Dives forward, first down inside the 35-yard line. Buckeyes, Kirk, since week two, the best FBS team at converting third downs. Yeah, going back to the way he played quarterback early in the year, remember he had 11 days after the injury to Braxton Miller. He was indecisive. He was hesitant when it came to running the football. How could you blame him? He hadn't played in two years. He had four new offensive linemen. Such a different runner from the middle of the season on, making quicker decisions and just getting enough yards to be able to move the sticks and showing some physical now when he runs Evan Spencer comes in motion whistle before the play like the left guard there Billy Price might have been leaning for Ohio State false start offense in the 65 
five yard penalty. First down. We'll talk about this offensive line for Ohio State, which had to replace four starters. They struggle early in the season. They've been getting better as it's going on. Well, think about what they lost from a year ago. A lot of experience. Taylor Decker, 23 starts, was on the right side last year, moved over to the left, but Price Bourne. You have Elfine, Baldwin, all these guys making their first, this year, their first year as a starters, and I think you're seeing more and more continuity. On first and 15, Barrett in the pocket, throws downfield and over the head of Evan Spencer, who was well covered there by Darian Hicks. It's an example of what these Michigan State defenders will do. Uh, we, we, we've caught a lot of games with Pat Nardese and Mark D'Antonio, and I, I really believe nationally they set the bar with this scheme, and I think people are starting to copycat what they do, and it's just very different from everything you see in this era of offense, offense, offense. You come to East Lansing, it's about the defense, it's about being aggressive, and literally begging you, daring you to try to beat them in man-to-man -man coverage. They're very good at it. action on second and 15 incomplete that was right through the hands of Dontre Wilson the speedy slot weapon third and long and last year when Ohio State played Michigan State they really struggled on third and fourth down in fact they were one of 12 and the average distance was almost third and nine it was like 8.6 very very challenging we talked in the open that they want to be in third and manageable because of the variety of blitzes and because they're so multiple and how they can confuse the offensive line Buckeyes not in field goal range the wind is blowing from left to right so Barrett fires short Smith cannot break a tackle dropped at the 30 by Riley Fuller Part of the famous Bulla family here at Michigan State. So we'll see if the true freshman kicker, Sean Nuremberger, trots out. He's a pretty good kicker from distance. This would be a 47-yarder, again, working into a slight wind. So Ohio State on their opening drive, eight plays, seven passes with a lot of tempo and going up against Michigan State. Interesting that they kind of abort the running game on that opening drive. That false star penalty, of course, setting him back on the first down. So Nuremberger from Buckner, Kentucky, from 47 yards for the early lead. Just short. It was on the edge of his range. Kickers have a better time kicking left to right than this direction tonight. Just short. Yeah, literally about a yard yep. short from hitting the crossbar. Let's talk to some of the kickers on the field and warm-ups and especially the Michigan State kickers and They talked about you know, the, this stadium with the changes and the scoreboards how it's gotten It's gotten even tougher to try to figure out sometimes the wind the wind tunnel that's that's out there So here comes Connor Cook from Hinkley, Ohio the Cleveland area who hadn't had a career 300 yard game until the Big Ten Championship game backed it up again in the Rose Bowl Yeah, he'll engineer a balanced attack very confident with everything that he sees because of the experience he gained from a year ago in the success especially against Ohio State and then Stanford in the Rose Bowl high formation handoff to Jeremy Langford the feature back for the Spartans Ohio State strings it out but Langford gets about seven yards it's like about a matchup on the edge we're gonna keep our eye on Joey Bosa has been a sack machine but Jack Conklin in two years has not yet allowed a sack He's zero in his entire career, and now he's a sophomore. But, you know, he weighed 330 last year as a freshman, and he's dropped 30 pounds. It's allowed him to be a lot quicker. Now he lines up on the left side. Joey Bosa will move around, and right now he is lined up head-to-head -head right across from Jack Conklin. That'll be a fun matchup to watch tonight. Langford got seven on first down. And Cook can take a play action shot on second down, looping downfield, throwing over the head of two Buckeye defenders. Keith Mumphrey hauls it in in the red zone. They run the football in the opening play. Look at the protection. We just talked about Conklin does a good job on Bosa. And then these wide receivers, Tony Lippick gets most of the attention. But here it's Mumphrey, the senior, with great speed. He goes right by Conley. Safety's up tight, expecting run. They get behind him in coverage. And a great throw by Connor Cook here early. He comes out looking very sharp. That was a beautiful throw, 44 yards to Mumphrey. From the 19, Langford takes his way for also running, actually. They thought they had him stopped. He 
Muscles free for about four. That play got a little bit ugly because Michael Bennett got penetration. 63 for Ohio State. It looked like he may have blown the play up. And give Langford a lot of credit in that offensive line for not giving up on the play. Langford is a tough physical runner and really does a nice job of giving this offense balance. Cook and the receivers get so much attention, but with the offensive line and, Lang and Langford's ability to run, makes it very tough on an Ohio State defense to try to lock in on one area. Five receivers, empty backfield. Unusual look, and Connor Cook almost fell backwards. Try to keep his balance. Langford makes the catch. The rule incomplete now. Darren Lee was there to deliver the blow, but that, that play got off to a weird start. Yeah, big play by Darren Lee. I, you know, he almost made not to, not to, not top ten Sports Center right there. Luckily, they got the snap off. But a good play by. How about Darren Lee? Played quarterback in high school in a high school uh, near Columbus at New Albany. Didn't have a lot of experience playing defense. He shows up at Ohio State as an athlete, and Urban Meyer and the staff move him as an outside linebacker. He's stepped in very nicely at 6'2", 228 pounds, plays out in space and plays well. Third and seven. Brook rolling. Rolling short. He has a man open. First down. Still running into the end zone. Touchdown, Mumphrey. An Ohio State defense that never misses tackles. Missed one here. And Mumphrey has a big opening drive. He fights through a backup corner, Gary Conley, and into the end zone. He had the big reception to get the ball deep in Ohio State territory. He was in motion there. Conley could not stay up with him. And a nice throw again by Connor Cook. And first drive is the way Michigan State want to set the tone in this hyped-up football game. Mumphrey, a senior who had 10 catches all season coming in, makes the big catch to set up this touchdown reception. He sure did. And Chris, he, they put him out in motion. You can see Conley, a freshman, trying to make a play. He was slow to get there to begin with. Mumphrey, I think, recognized that. And instead of giving up on the play, lowered his shoulder. And he puts the Spartans up by a touchdown here early. After a missed Buckeyes field goal, the Spartans march 70 yards in five plays, two minutes and two seconds. Connor Cook to Keith Mumphrey. The play that sets up the touchdown and the one that finds the end zone. So Michigan State, which jumped to a 17-0 lead against Ohio State in the conference championship game, on top here again quickly. Andre Wilson from the one. Hurdles a man. Nice return out near the 30-yard line, Kurt. Go back to this touchdown with Mumphrey, who goes in motion right here. Now, he's got a freshman, Gary and Conley, on him because Eli Apple right now, the starter, is out. You see he goes back. Now, he's got man coverage. Conley's already behind him. But right here, Lippitt does a good job of kind of using a, a, a screen to give Mumphrey a little bit more room to be able to get out into the flat. And then that's just raw toughness there by Mumphrey to go over top of the freshman Conley but Conley's in this game because Eli Apple the starter number 13 has a hamstring that he's dealing with and is on the sideline so not only is a starting nickelback Reeves out but now also a starting corner Apple out of the secondary as well Ohio State's defense missing just 32 tackles all season that's the fewest among all power five teams but a big missed tackle by the freshman so Barrett now in a seven nothing hole Flanked by Ezekiel Elliott, who gets the pitch and gets the corner. Outruns Calhoun, finds the sideline out near midfield. So Elliott, the sophomore from St. Louis, a nice game. And there's man-to-man -man on the outside, and a great call here is the speed option. You get the ball to the outside, see the corner staying with the receiver? Now you've got an alley around the corner, and you can see with Elliott, at 6 feet, 225 pounds, he's got great speed to be able to get to the edge. A cat and mouse between Urban Meyer, Tom Herman on the offensive staff, and Pat Narduzzi, who's upstairs, communicating downstairs and out to the defense. Barrett hands it off. Elliott runs near side. Again, gets the corner. A big gain. Still running inside the 30. Cuts it back. Elliott down inside the 5. And the scarlet and gray strike back very quickly. 
Great call here with the counter that's going to start this way and come back. See how the defense is overflowing. It's designed to cut back. Nice job here. Well designed. They brought the right tackle around as well. Playing fast on first and goal. Barrett swung out fires over the head of uh, Smith. So two running plays by Elliott and Ohio State very quickly threatening. Well, you remember in this game last year, Braxton Miller and Carlos Hyde as a combination gave this Michigan State defense fits. Now, JT Barrett doesn't have the explosiveness that Braxton brings to the running game. And a lot of people wondered who would replace Carlos Hyde this year. You have a true freshman, Curtis Samuel, who made a start last week against Illinois. But Zeke Elliott, this is his kind of game against a physical Spartan defense. He's off to a great start. With the freshman from Brooklyn, Samuel is in the game now to the right of Barrett. On second and goal, quarterback keeper, design run, and Barrett scampers into the end zone. Ohio State answers in four plays. You know, championship type of atmosphere in game. You get down on the road seven, you're going to find out what you're made out of. And JT Barrett steps up and leads Ohio State down to a potential game tying touchdown. And how about the true freshman? You talked about Curtis Samuel checks into the game, pivotal block to allow him to get around the edge and into the end zone. Talked about the defensive personalities for both teams as Nuremberger. Ties the game at seven, but both of these offenses capable of both scoring very quickly and grinding out long drives. Yeah, this is a big run. The counter to be able to come back. He follows 76, the right tackle. Baldwin shows some speed out in the open field. Doesn't go out of bounds. Keeps the play alive. Almost takes it into the end zone. He goes out, catches a breath. Watch four. Get a block right there on the corner. Gets him into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Buckeyes have tied it up at seven. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. ShopChooseNissan.com. Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. And Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. Tom Izzo Spartans ranked 18 preseason exhibition game last night. They showed St. Cloud State, who's boss, 97-56. <laughs> Izzo is the man. Always, always, no matter who he graduates, always has a team that's potentially capable of making a run. And I love how he challenges his team with some of the early games that they play in November and December, gets them ready for conference play. Ohio State, excellent special teams, a huge emphasis for Urban Meyer. Kyle Clinton to kick it away. They boot deep in the end zone. There'll be no return. Talked about Connor Cook's success. He was trusted by the Michigan State Brain Trust there. Dave Warner allowing him to throw the football a lot against Ohio State. He rewarded that trust. Yeah, he sure did. He had a big game, and I think this is where his confidence started to, to really soar. Uh, when you're announced as the MVP, most outstanding player, carries over into the Rose Bowl against Stanford in a game that was hyped up against a great defense, found some receivers, and again, offensive MVP with over 300 yards, goes into the offseason, becomes truly the leader for this offense, and has had another Another great year this year for the Spartans offense. He's a junior who will get some attention. He tends to sort of come back for his senior year so far. That's his plan anyway. Lang for the first down carry. Setter step gets the edge and sprints out to the 44-yard line. When you said gets the edge. It's because of a great block here by Paul Lang, 83. See how he sets the edge there. He's able to overpower Steve Miller. And for Ohio State, again, so much talk about Connor Cook. They better be able to get physical. And with Eli Apple out, continue to watch 19, the freshman, Gary and Conley. It looks like Apple looks like he's now back into the game, actually. See, Urban, Urban lost his headset there. For that. <laughs> yeah. Apple's back into the game now at the bottom of the screen. He's a first down throw. Cook pressure just does get it away. Incomplete. Darren Lee, the linebacker, got there quickly into the quarterback's face. Only sacked five times all year. It's the biggest difference that you see now with Chris Ash as a, helping out as a co-defensive coordinator. They blitz 43 a lot. He's almost part, is, is active at getting after the quarterback is Joey Bosa. He has three and a half sacks. He's physical. He's he's one of their known as one of their blitzers. Again, he's probably a safety that's up playing as a linebacker. And Cook make the Buckeyes pay for blitzing. He's very, very good when opponents try to pressure in that way. 
There's a handoff and motioned McGarrett Kings, a receiver, into the backfield. A flag comes down as he's knocked down at the 46. So he may have a hold there by Travis Jackson, left guard. Holding. Offense in the 63. 10 yard penalty, second down. Jackson, one of 27 Ohioans on this roster. Cook and a couple of offensive linemen. Plenty of guys on defense. Extra inspiration whenever they face the scarlet and gray. The interior of the Michigan State offensive line has their hands full. We've talked so much about Joey Bosa and even Darren Lee. But you've got a couple of veterans with Michael Bennett and Adolphus Washington. So these guys have played a lot of football. Jack Conklin kind of leads the way. Jack Allen in the middle. Travis Jackson, some veterans, but they'll be tested tonight, probably more so than any game they've played up to this point, other than maybe the Oregon game early in the year. Right tackle, Clarks from Cincinnati. On second down, Cook has good protection, delivers a strike, now incomplete. That's a rare drop. Eli Apple was defending on Aaron Burbridge, but Michigan State coming into this game only four drops all season. And how about the, you know, I don't know if this is considered a drop or as much as Apple there to be able to help encourage the drop, but this is this is something to keep an eye on for Ohio State. Apple's trying to go. He's been out early. Michigan State's taking advantage of it, but Eli Apple, a freshman from New Jersey, trying to tough it out and play corner. The other thing you're seeing right now is Duran Grant is following Tony Lippett, the top receiver for Michigan State, all over the field, whether he's to the left or the right. He's to the left this time, Kirk, top of the formation, number 14 in green. Cook has protection, fires a strike near midfield, flag down again, near side, right at the line of scrimmage. Legal formation, offense. So a couple of penalties on Michigan State's second possession, making things complicated. You've got to get all the way to the Ohio State 48 to make a first down, and they're being Offense. marched back. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, third down. They're very good on third and long, this counter cook, but I don't know about third and 25. Sure. No, no, and, and you know, the, the Ohio State defense right now, it, it's interesting to see their approach. I, I think they want to put pressure, but you get a team to third down. Now it's about just trying to get the ball back to J.T. Barrett. But with a veteran like Cook, you don't ever want to let your guard down here and just assume it's a draw or a screen. But guys rush for Cook. Trapped and sacked. A rare sack. Ball is loose. A fight for it now. Donovan Clark, the tackle, jumped on it. Players hesitated, didn't see the ball come out. Donovan Clark, heads up play because there were about three white jerseys all over that football. And that ball was live. It came out. Chris, you talked about it. You don't see this very often. They get pressure with four. Joey Bosa's there. But like I said, Bennett also, the ball comes out. It looked like before his knee touched, there's two, there's Bosa's there. Steve Miller. Darren Lee got his Darren hand. Darren Lee's punch right, right hand the ball. punched yeah. it out of there. But that ball is live. Bosa sitting on the ball, but it continued to move around. So the Spartans give up a rare sack, but dodge a turnover. As Jalen Marshall is back. Ball bounces in traffic. Now there's a scrum at the 33. The short punt by Mike Sadler. And some of those blockers for Marshall inattentive down there. Didn't see it. Spartans say they have it. It looked like Jeff Green. We're seeing some rare things, Kirk. Yeah. A sack allowed by the Spartans. A special teams turnover by the Buckeyes. Big mistake. And the young man from Columbus, Ohio, Chris Fry, who's pretty excited about getting it. But it's Jeff Green, 89. He just... Did not hear the Peter, Peter, Peter call to get out of there. Ball bounces off of him. He tries to jump on it, but Chris Fry, the outside linebacker, true freshman, again, from Upper Arlington, Ohio, heads up, jumps on the football, and gives the Spartans great field position. That will not improve Urban Meyer's move at all. Kind of thing that Ohio State really hasn't done on special teams this year. Not only was Jeff Green there, but you had two or three other Ohio State players in that territory and talk about the importance of special teams in these kind of games. Big mistake. Langford breaking free. To the 10. Touchdown. <laughs> 33. 
33 yards for number 33. Turnover quickly cashed in. You talk about a reversal of fortunes in the last minute. Ohio State could have had a turnover in scoring position, fumbled a punt, and suddenly the Spartans back on top. Wow. But the Ohio State defense thinks they've done their job. They forced a punt. Then they got to go right back on the field. Watch Jeremy Langford right there, that little jump cut. Good job of the lineman coming up all the way up to the second level. Looked like Joshua Perry was slow to react, and Connor Cruz went right up there, made a nice block, but give all the credit to Langford with the vision, the jump cut, and into the end zone. Three touchdowns in about six minutes here. Kirk Spartans back on top. That was a fumble play. Yeah, if we come into this game, it's cold, it's wet, it's damp. You're thinking, okay, this is going to be a low-scoring game, and these two offenses have come out making some big plays and some miscues and some opportunities, and we've got points up on the board. Langford is 11th rushing touchdown of the season. With a big night, he could go over 1,000 yards. And there's a low kick. Bounces around, fielded finally by Wilson. Andre Wilson loses the ball again. Ohio State covers it, but nearly another special teams disaster for the Buckeyes. Can't even imagine an Urban Meyer if that would have been recovered by Michigan State. Cam Burroughs got it after Wilson yeah, again had the ball just punched out. That, that time by a helmet. Yeah, helmet on the football. Ball is loose. Ohio State fortunate to jump on top of that. That is Cam Burroughs. Only five fumbles lost for Ohio State coming into this game. Very nearly a second one. Elliott in the pistol formation. They fake it to him. Pressure off the edge. Smith makes the catch but cannot escape. A sure tackle by R.J. Williamson. And a corner blitz from the boundary to the blind side there of J.T. Barrett. Great recognition of feeling it by Barrett. Also, nice job by the receiver. He kind of aborted his fake, got out of it, and just got the ball out quickly to the receiver. Fourth catch already for Smith. Barrett now chased. Escapes. He's a physical runner, not as explosive as Braxton Miller, but lowers the shoulder, gets the first down. There's been a lot of talk about his knee because of the injury against Penn State, and a lot of people watched him play last week against Illinois and thought he missed some throws, and is, he's a little tentative. Is he going to be okay? Watching him Thursday in practice didn't appear to be anything slowing him down. Watching him here early in this game, as you said, he is a physical runner, doesn't have that big playability, the threat of that the way Braxton Miller does but he will lower his shoulder and get yards Trey Wayne's one of the starting corners lost his helmet he's out of the game as they hand it off inside to Elliott he twists across the 45 ESPN has got the quick and loans race for heroes 500 from Phoenix tomorrow afternoon 2 o'clock Eastern time Pat Narduzzi again for Michigan State defense coordinator a lot of movement from the Michigan State D line Elliott Picks his way near midfield. It'll be third and about three. Marcus Rush on the tackle. The movement is to create confusion, whether you're stunning or you're blitzing. Remember, the last time Ohio State was truly tested, they got a tested Happy Valley against Penn State, but it was against Bud Foster week two when they gave up seven sacks. They had multiple hurries on JT Barron. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare, and this is really the first challenge since then against this kind of defense and up to this point here early they're doing a very good job of communicating and picking up a lot of the different looks that the spartans are offering him up front third and two ezekiel elliott moves to the slot barrett predictably keeps the ball you know it's coming but still tough to stop and you see the strength of the texan those are tough legs to tackle, aren't they? They are. Good double team on the right side there. You see Bourne and Elfline. They do a nice job of giving enough of a crease there. And again, he may not have that quickness and that big playability, but he's he has enough quickness there to not just lower his shoulder for four or five yards. He's looking to continue to run for 10, even 15 yards. And you're seeing that empty set clearing out the secondary.
secondary, getting the numbers to the advantage of the Ohio State offense. And with a quarterback that's basically a running back at times, it's tough for the Spartans to stop. Buckeyes already have more rushing yards than Michigan State usually gives up in an entire game. Ten more, in fact. Here's a first down throw. And some confusion there. Here comes a flag. It's going to be interference as Evan Spencer was working against Darian Hicks. He grabbed a hold of Evan Spencer. And Hicks really didn't have anything else to do because he's beaten on the play. Cuts back to the inside and right there grabs a hold of him. Balls in the air. Officials all over the call. Pass interference. Defense. Number two. Automatic. First down. Spencer, whose dad, Tim, was a great running back here. Later, a running back's coach. Now does that for the Buccaneers. But Spencer grew up going to Ohio State practices as a kid. He's living his dream playing for the Buckeyes. No question. Remember, you used to see him when he was about seven or eight years old with his younger brother out of practice all the time over at the Woody Hayes facility. As you said, living a dream. And how about Tom Harmon saying he's the MVP of the offense because of his unselfish attitude and his willingness to be a great blocker. Four penalties on Michigan State. Here's a pitch to Elliott in the backfield. Probably might see a flag, but no neutral zone infraction and a big play from Shalik Calhoun. Well, that looked to me like that was offsides by Damon Knox at the line of scrimmage right there over the left guard. Surprised that that was not called. And here's Calhoun making his presence felt. Just used his quickness there to get to the outside because not let Elliott get outside of him. Baldwin didn't really have much of a chance there, but. I think David Knox got away with there with the one there on and first and ten. Instead of a five-yard penalty, they lose five. Yeah. Calhoun, this is his kind of game. He loves the bright lights. A big game player, that defensive end. Barrett steps up, delivers across the middle. Catch made down inside the ten-yard line. And Devin Smith has been active. There are flags down after the throw. Did they rough Barrett, perhaps? Might have been hands to the face by the left tackle. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense. On the 68. 15 yard penalty. Second down. It's Taylor Decker erasing a big gain down inside the 10. Yeah, Taylor Decker got his hands up. Really both he and the Michigan State defender both. It was Calhoun. They were right there. He grabs a hold of his face mask. They're both grabbing each other's face mask. But I think initially he saw the left tackle initiate the contact. But Ohio State another penalty, so instead of picking up a first down, they continue to go backwards. But that's the matchup that Ohio State is going to try to attack. Inside receivers against safeties in man-to-man -man coverage. They've got to win that battle. So it's second and 30. They hand it off. Elliott, nothing there. Calhoun, another stop. The junior from Middletown, New Jersey. Kind of future look. pro. Yeah, future pro. And a guy who started a little bit slow this year, and he admitted that to us on Friday that, you know, for whatever reason, things just weren't clicking. He felt maybe some pressure to live up to the year that he had a year ago. And I think around maybe the Nebraska game, he just started to kind of relax and just play football and not force things. And his teammates are telling him, play like you can play. Bring the old Shalik back. And he has lately. Barrett pressured again, tried a desperation heave to the sidelines. Demetrius Cox was there. That was a sideways throw from inside the tackle box, and they'll throw a flag. Had a first down at the Michigan State 22 and kept moving back, back, back to their own 45. And here is the pressure. They just overload the Ohio State left side, who you can't see is coming from the outside with Demetrius Cox. The back, Elliott can only pick up one of them. The Ohio State offensive line slides to their right instead of to the left. And Elliott had to try to pick up two blitzers for Michigan State. I think his knee might have even been down before he threw the ball away. On the run, Cameron Johnson, the Aussie who does this as well as anyone, but guys down at, at the six yard line. To Chris Cotter in the studio for an update. Chris? All right, Chris, time for Taco Bell's studio update. LSU strikes first in Death Valley. Anthony Jennings 
finds Malachi Dupree originally ruled out of bounds. They reviewed it, said it was a touchdown. 7-0 Tigers, and they're squarely outplaying Alabama in the first quarter. Meanwhile, it's as good as we thought it would be in Fort Worth, Kansas State trailing TCU by 7. Chris? Busy, busy night. Chris will count on you to keep us posted. All these games, of course, interconnected in this playoff chase. A month from tomorrow, the final bracket is revealed. So Spartans are backed up as the Buckeyes down the punt. And Langford is trying to get yet another 100-yard game in conference. Come in, and his streak is 12 in a row. Florida State pulling ahead of Virginia now by 15. How about LSU? Is there a more improved team from a month no, ago? No, not at all. You talk about the connection of all these conferences with the, with the playoffs rankings. In this stadium, they have these big jumbo screens. They're showing the end of the Auburn game. And when Auburn finally fumbled and the game was over, this stadium went crazy as if the Spartans had just scored a touchdown. It's a function of the new era, isn't it? They're very aware of what's going on around the country. Auburn with a second loss, just like Notre Dame. You have to figure a two-loss Tiger team, a long shot at this point. Yeah, very oh, much so. without a doubt. They're way on the outside looking in. There's, there's the screens, and the entire stadium was filled up. It was quiet because everybody's watching like they're in their family room watching the end of that Auburn game. <laughs> And after that fumble, they, as I said, they just went berserk. And I sat and I thought, when was the last time Michigan State cared about the A&M-Auburn game? Now they're going to care about TCU and oh, Kansas yeah. State and Oregon yeah. and everybody cool. now. It's great. Inside of a minute in the first quarter on third and eight. Cook gets good protection, delivers, but it's dropped. It's a couple drops. That was an obvious drop by Lippitt, who's the dominant receiver on this team, and it's fourth down. And third down, they have soft coverage from Ohio State. Corners are bailing. It's an easy throw. Something first down that, if he holds on. First down. It's something that uh, I forget the term that that Connor Cook told us that you know when the when corners bail, he has a term that he and his receivers have where they're going to take advantage of that every single time. I think he said free access. Maybe was the term that he used because when corners bail on third down, well, take the first down, move the sticks. But that time Lippitt dropped it. Sadler from his end zone, but he boots it away. Pretty good punt into the breeze and. Marshall makes a fair catch at the 48. Urban Meyer, of course, 13th season as a head coach. Did some damage to the Big Ten when he was the Florida Gators head coach. Beat this Ohio State team, of course, for a BCS title as an underdog. Won a pair of titles. Briefly retired and then took what he considers really his dream job back in his home state. Yeah, he came. You know, he was a broadcaster, and I think he really thought he was going to be doing that for a number of years. The Ohio State job, which was his dream job, opened up, and retirement was short. He got back out and yes, it was. became the head coach for the Buckeyes. And, don't him. Yeah, and you know what? He's got a different look and feel to him. We spent some time with him Thursday. He tried to say it was going to be a different approach. I think you can, from the time we've been around him at Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, it does feel different. He's still intense and competitive. Competitive, but has things in perspective, I think. How, how do you mean different? I mean, he wants to win as badly as ever. Late game. Offense. On the, on the 16. Five-yard penalty. First down. I think different in a way where it, it's not every single moment of his life and day. He's got three kids. He spends a lot of time with them. He goes to activities, whether it's sporting events. He's still competitive. He's still crazy, but he's still as, <laughs> as, as fired up as he ever will be. But he's I think, a crazy parent for those kids who play sports. He just butted me when I saw him on the field before the game. And boom! I almost went down. I mean, he's still fired up. <laughs> First and 15 and again. You can see both these Offensive and defensive line so anxious to get off the ball quickly a few penalties like this already in this first quarter yeah, we, I mean, We've seen about nine nine penalties now. outside defense number four contact in the neutral zone five-yard penalty first down a few of them like that they got away with one that, that wasn't called These big games miscues whether it's turning the football over Penalties think about that penalty after that nice pass Ohio State had deep in the Michigan State territory with the hands into the face personal foul that was called back To be the difference in a game time at times back We started first and ten at the 49 and another flag and a whistle comes in Full start. Offense. 
and the 15. Five yard penalty. First down. Right, so let, let's uh, control the adrenaline out there. Well, I, I think the speed of the game. Remember, they've been playing Illinois and Rutgers and Maryland. The speed of the game is very different. And I think that time it was just a simple fact that Zeke Elliott knew he had to be able to pick up pass protection and he started to lean a little bit and cheat a little bit there's a little bit of a different tempo right now for both these teams that they're adjusting to compared to the rest of the conference that they're used to playing Barrett wrapped up dropped Joel Heath the tackle got him his first full sack of the season well, he should give an assist to Malik McDowell because he ate up a double team on the right side and open it makes it one-on-one -on -one for him against Billy Price and he just uses power with his shoulder but also quickness to go right by him. That's the thing with Joel Heath. A 6'6", 290 pounds. He's a big man but has great quickness in the inside for the Spartans pass rush. He's another Ohioan from Cincinnati. That's a imposing Good looking off the bus defensive line for Michigan State, isn't it? Already impacting things in this first quarter. 14 7 for the guys in all green. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Seven, our score, Michigan State on top. We begin the second quarter. An eventful, if somewhat sloppy, first quarter as the teams try to settle down, flush out the nerves, get used to this best fast tempo, as you said, Kurt. Very strange first quarter when Michigan State has 14 points and Connor Cook has two completions, both to Keith Mumphrey. Lippitt doesn't have a catch yet, yet they have 14 points. Ohio State running the ball well in the first quarter. But it's a first down throw for Barrett. Delivers far side. Diving play made at the 45. That's Michael Thomas. Ohio State has a lot of respect for Trey Wayans, the corner into the boundary, number 15. But they're going to have to try to make plays against the sophomore from Solon, Ohio. It may take another peek at that. Darian Hicks. Time Thomas against Hicks to the field is where Ohio State's so far trying to make a lot of completions. That against the safeties. Thomas is the nephew of Keyshawn Johnson. His dad is Keyshawn's brother. Of course, comes from Los Angeles, and they'll now stop to see if Thomas held on to that football. He's trying to grip it as he fell to the ground. Previous plays on the further review. The row in the field was a completed pass. This is a Apps. This is as good of a look as you're going to get. Ball got into his chest, Kirk, and then seemed to come free as it got near the ground. So the hand gets under, and then does the ball. Yeah, I think it squirts free. Yeah. Good effort laying out there, but he didn't make the hands catch. He sort of bounced off of his body down toward the ground. Tried to sell it. Yeah, a lot of times officials will look to see if you have possession of the football because the ground can the ball can actually touch the ground as long as it doesn't help you possess the football. Dave Katai is our official here. What do you, what do you think? The, the replay booth is next door. Steve Newman taking a look at it, Dave. Well, well said, you guys, because it looks like he does have the ball, but the ball comes loose, bounces back to him, so he doesn't have secure possession of the ball. Just because the ball hits the ground doesn't necessarily mean it's right. incomplete, but the ball moves. Okay. Just had the one hand on the ball as it was touching the ground. Even if the... I was going to say it's Paul, third and Paul is still third and 15. Yeah, third yeah. And yeah, third and 14. They do show the replays in, in, in the stadiums now around the country, and the crowd here is pretty convinced that that was incomplete. They may not be completely unbiased. <laughs> Except for maybe 8% of the stadium. Feels almost balmy now. I felt good this morning. 
No coat in game no. one. No. No, it was first, one of the first real opportunities to get in the Midwest for the football weather. Roy Field is at an incomplete pass. The ball was placed at the 36 yard line. Third down. Please keep. So the call of catch is overturned. We move the ball back to the 36. He makes it a really long third down play. 23 yards now. Completely different call, obviously, from third and 14, where you have a shot to third and 23 against this defense, which is third in the nation. The third down defense, only giving up 26% of the chances on third down. Barrett, this pressure delivers far side. Smith over the shoulder, catch at the 20. And they convert on third and a mile. What a throw. The placement by the, foot, the football here by JT Barrett. He just drops it right over his shoulder to the outside. Look at Hicks. I'm surprised he didn't jam him, try to make him work to get around him. And if you want to try to run stride for stride with Devin Smith, you're not going to win that battle very often. He's the fastest player on the Ohio State roster. Didn't get challenged at the line of scrimmage. And the ball, the way it was thrown away towards the sidelines, Give Smith a lot of credit for waiting to get to the outside and let the ball come right down to him. There's a wildcat look as Jalen Marshall, number 17, comes into the game. Play clock at four. Runs right. Jalen Marshall scoring down inside the 10. Here's a wrinkle we expected to see. Jalen Marshall played quarterback in high school at Middletown down in the Dayton, Cincinnati area. Was a great dual threat quarterback. Plays now the H position here behind Dontre Wilson, but comes in, goes back to his old roots here as a quarterback and a threat to throw it as well. Marshall rolling left. Elliott lead blocker dragged down inside the five. You know. Barrett's a good runner, but you can see the difference. Marshall accelerates quickly. Completely different feel. It's reminiscent of last year when Braxton Miller had his hands on the ball about every other play running it. Remember down here with the background of Urban Meyer, he loves to run the quarterback and also the jump pass. And first and goal, Marshall carries for a third straight play, knocked down by Rush at about the two. Such different acceleration. I mean, he's, he's an H, he's an H back. He's a wide receiver. who will be checking out of the game now. But when he gets his hands on the ball, it's it's a tailback or a receiver with his hands on the ball and gets to the perimeter in a hurry. Shalik Calhoun, the fine defensive end we've been talking about, slow to get up. Guy they cannot afford to lose. Narduzzi sticks with his starters. He leans on these guys to play a lot of snaps, including number 89, who'll leave now on third and goal. It's good to see him walking off such a big part of this, this defense now. Again, not sitting here first guessing or speculating, but all I know is you and I were there for two hours watching practice. There's a lot of time spent on the jump pass down inside this five-yard line for Ohio State. Barrett is back in the game. Elliott to his left. Third and goal. Wilson motions into a wing position. Barrett fakes it. Nope, hands it straight ahead and stops short of the goal line. Taiwan Jones and Ed Davis, linebackers, combined to stop Elliott. Now a decision coming up. Yeah, they attack downhill. Pretty good leg drive here by Ezekiel Elliott to try to get the ball into the end zone. But you had linebackers and also the safeties, R.J. Williamson and Curtis Drummond helping out as well inside that one-yard line. We've been waiting the entire season for November 8th for this game. How about this moment, a goal line stand, fourth down here with a lot on the line in this football game here early. A lot of shifting, and the play clock was winding down. Urban Meyer sprinted down to call time. So, a big play coming up early second quarter. Buckeyes trying to tie it. Ohio State took the ball at midfield. They've driven it to the one. Now right into the teeth of Michigan State's student section. Urban Meyer, after a timeout, 
has the offense on the field. Going for the touchdown and the tie. Three receiver formation has the tight end Hireman along with Elliott. Elliott motions out now. Barrett keeps it, dives, muscles to the end zone. A fourth down conversion, and Ohio State within a PAT of tying things. A great leg drive there by JT Barrett. Michigan State, once they saw Elliott motion out, they knew exactly what was coming. They were there to stop it. They held their point, they held the point there at the line of scrimmage, but at the end of the day, it's just JT Barrett at 225 pounds, lowering his shoulder and driving the Spartans into the end zone. How about the third and 23 conversion here? The 43-yard pass, the beautiful throw to Devin Smith, setting up the touchdown. This and was the key. Devin throw. Smith does a good job of staying at the numbers, opening up the alley. This is third and a mile. See the alley there to the outside? He waits to the last moment to break away from Hicks. Ball is perfectly thrown, sets up this fourth down where he's going to try to just overpower the right side behind Baldwin and Elfline. Wasn't necessarily great blocking, but it was kind of a stalemate there at the line of scrimmage. Here's a great look. There's contact before he gets into the end zone, and there's the legs right there pushing him into that end zone to tie this game up. Barrett has 90 yards passing. 86 of them have gone to Devin Smith on five receptions. The guy who admitted this week that he cried for about two days after Ohio State lost the Big Ten title to Michigan State, lost their chance to play for a BCS title. Very open about his emotions, how devastated he was. Makes a huge catch to set up the tying touchdown here. Clemson then booted away. It's a short kick directed to one of the up men at the 15. Cutting it back, Trevor Pendleton, not the natural return guy, but looks like a fullback with the ball up to the 35-yard line. Here's that Big Ten championship game. Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes, a 24-zip run to take the lead. Connor Cook to Price, 27-24. Langford, a 26-yard scamper. And Michigan State scores the first 17 and the last 17 to head to the Rose Bowl. They, of course, beat Stanford. That game has been on the minds of both of these teams. I think it helped take Michigan State to a different level of respect. I think it added a lot of fuel to the fire of Urban Meyer and Ohio State to try to get back into those kinds of games with getting another opportunity. First down throw. Cook completes it short game. We check in to Heather Cook. Shelton on the catch. Guys, Connor Cook was very honest about that Ohio State win and that Rose Bowl win. Changed his life saying, it's so unreal. There isn't a day that goes by where I don't think about it and think about those two wins and where some might get complacent. Just the opposite for him. He said it gave me more confidence, made me want to work harder. Well, thanks. So that was interesting to hear him say that Unlike you know, pushing things in the past, focusing only on the moment, that he every day thinks about that, that moment in Pasadena, that clutch performance against the Cardinal. You know, it's, for a guy growing up in Northeast Ohio and did have a ton of offers, to be able to play quarterback at Michigan State was such a proud tradition of quarterback play, and to be able to come that, become that guy, he is living a dream, and he doesn't take it for granted. And third and three, quarterback keeps it. He takes a big shot, but it's 6'4", about 220. Cook, who ran over a Wolverine defender here in the last game two weeks ago to ignite the offense, not afraid to pay the price when he needs to. No, and, and he's, he can surprise you. He's deceptive with his athletic ability and his speed because he's 6'4". You don't necessarily think he can, he can run the ball that well, but he can. Not just lowering his shoulder. You'll see him at some point tonight be able to run away from a defender or two and get out into the open field. But remember, he has two completions tonight. Ohio State has Duran Grant following Tony Lippett all over this field. On the delay, the handoff, but swarmed in the backfield as Nick Hill as Michael Bennett, a senior tackle, got through quickly. 
The Centerville Elk has had a great career last year. He was banged up, had some stingers. He said he basically was playing with one arm. We asked him if he had any, a, a procedure done, and he said, you know, I just the only thing I could really do is rest it. But he has incredible explosiveness there in the inside. Nice job to slip the Centerville Elk here. Oh, the old got, alma mater. An elk last week, an you. elk this week. They're undefeated, right? They sure are. Five-yard loss. Play by Bennett. Bill is still in the game, but Cook's dropping straight back. Pressure throws as he hits, but complete underneath. Josiah Price, the tight end, is hammered right near the marker. First catch for Price. Nice job by Price, but how about Connor Cook? Here's the toughness, looking down the barrel here. Washington is closing in. He beats his man. He's about to get a sack. And how about it being 6-4 and keeping your eyes, a great look in his eyes. He throws that ball before Price even turns around, anticipates it, had to get rid of it because of the pressure from Washington. There's the experience of Connor Cook. Nice hands for a tight end, too. Price, who had that go-ahead touchdown we just showed you against the Buckeyes. Whistle before third and one. It's like Dino called that from the sideline. Michigan State, first of the half. Be a full charge. Timeout. So back and forth. The Spartans with a key third down play coming up when you come back. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Always one of a kind. Jared, the gallery of jewelry. Truly unique designs that you won't find just anywhere. That's why he went to Jared. And Buick. Five expectation-shattering models. Another reason to experience the new Buick. Both schools, but especially Ohio State, well represented on the Armed Forces with Veterans Day approaching. ESPN salutes America's heroes, all the men and women who have served and are serving our country in the Armed Forces. No doubt many around the world with ties to these two schools looking in. And Michigan State facing a third and one. And at the Buckeyes, 46. It's Nick Hill and a quick snap, and the Spartans move the chains. So Hill comes into the game, not Langford, and snap it quickly. Change of pace when Hill comes in, different style of back. But we did, we did touch on, and I think it's interesting, that Duran Grant is following Tony Lippett. Remember, Ohio State usually plays a boundary in a field corner. But because of the respect they have for Tony Lippitt, who's one of the best receivers in the country, definitely in the Big Ten, they have Grant just following him all over the field when he is in the game. Now in the game, Delton Williams, the sophomore tailback, his first carry of the night. He falls forward for a nice game. Not quite a sure tackling Ohio State defense so far, Kirk, as we're used to seeing this year. No, not at all that time. He carried Darren Lee with him for about another five yards after the initial contact that Lee made on him. Different feel. I mean, Langford is a slasher and a veteran guy who has great vision. Nick Hill comes in 5'8", about 195 pounds. A little bit more of a guy you want to get out in space. And this guy's a load here. 230 pounds. And as you saw right there, he just lowers his shoulder. Still in the game. Langford is back. He motions out to the right side. They hand it again to the physical young back who just hammers forward. First down at the 31. And what right now what they're doing is Bennett is getting such penetration that they're trying to use that against him. He gets upfield. They're now using their offensive lineman just to let him go upfield. And then the backs are cutting up underneath of it. That means when that happens, the linebackers, right now you have a true freshman, Raquan McMillan, also Darren Lee and Josh Perry, they've got to close in when they undercut the Ohio State defensive line like that. First down, this is Williams again. Delton Williams just hammering through Ohio State's defense. We had 36 carries this season coming in. And you watch, watch Bennett right here getting upfield and watch the linemen, what they're doing. A nice pull right there. They're just pushing him out of the way. He's getting, he's beaten his man very often. This time they pull the right tackle, Clark, and a nice trap that pushes him out of the way. And again, keep an eye on Michael Bennett. He is beating his man. And because of that, they, they can't block him right now. So they're finding different ways to offset his quickness. Titus Powell just barely able to hang on to a foot there and make that tackle. Seven yards on first down. 
And Motion Shelton hammered head short of the first down. That time Ohio State's front standing up. There's Raekwon McMillan, and Urban Meyer will tell you he was recruited by every school in the country out of Georgia. A lot of people thought he might go to Alabama, looked at Clemson, ended up going to Ohio State, and is the future of the Ohio State defense. He will become the face of the Ohio State defense, playing more and more for the veteran senior Curtis Grant, but he's a difference maker in the middle for the Ohio State defense. He already got four and a half tackles for loss. <laughs> he does not look like a true freshman, does he? No, not at all. 240 pounds. Langford back in the game. It's an option look. Cook fakes it, picks his way, dives for a first down. So for the third time on the drive, Cook moves the chains with his feet. Yep, does a nice job of following his blockers. Cody Keeler is in here, 79. He's just going to follow him out here, and then he's going to become just patient. Watch how he just kind of lets his play develop, waits. He gave a little bit of a ball fake there to get Darren Lee out of position, but there's the nifty feet from Connor Cook. Hasn't been a typical passing night for him. Just four of nine for 77 yards. But again, three first down rushes for him. Still got it. Fires near side. Complete. Shelton. And it's a dodge attackler. Lunges to the eight. It's a first and goal. Ron Bell stopped him. But the Spartans playing with tempo themselves, threatening to take the lead again. A little bit of confusion, I think, in the Ohio State coverage. Darren Lee kind of came up, shrugged his shoulders, looking over at Eli Apple, and maybe not quite on the same page, but it's a matter of time with Connor Cook and his group of wide receivers. The Buckeyes have done a very good job of containing them up to this point, but at any moment he gets into rhythm, they become explosive on the passing game to offset the pressure on their running game. Connor Cook keeps it again. And a pinball's down inside the five. Still running. Quarterback muscling down to the one. Cook showing the strength, pushing the pile backwards. How about the spin move? This guy's from Northeast Ohio playing the Ohio State Buckeyes. He beat him last year. He knows that they want revenge. He's got those legs driving. He's trying to take it all the way to the end zone. He is leaving his heart literally on this field tonight. A little spin move here. Initially at the contact, he doesn't give up on that play. I thought he might be down there, but he just continued to carry Buckeye defenders all the way down to the one-yard line. Wholesale subs as the Buckeyes bring in fresh troops for that line on second and goal. Langford barrels into the end zone. Spartans reclaim the lead. They get a first and goal, Kirk. They score a touchdown 95% of the time. Pure power down there. At those big offensive linemen, the tight ends, they go heavy. And they dare you to stop them. They just get physical inside that five-yard line. But what a drive there by Connor Cook, the leadership there, making some throws, making a few runs, and making some great decisions. We've seen some quick strike touchdown drives. That was old school, methodical Big Ten. Seven minutes and 50 seconds, 14 plays to cover 66 yards. Yeah, and he did, as I said, he did a little bit of everything here. Kept the drive alive with his feet, but when it comes to scoring a touchdown for the Spartans, they get the ball to number 33. They get heavy up front with that offensive line. They get the surge and the push that they wanted. And again, jump out on top of Ohio State. Eager to see what John Saunders, Mac Brown, Danny Cannell have to say at halftime about this game and all the other showdowns that are going on around the country. Capital One halftime report coming up. Alabama has tied LSU at seven apiece in Baton Rouge. CCU beginning to impose itself at home against Kansas State. Wicked just scored a touchdown. Dontre Wilson from the goal line. Knocked down short of the 20 ball comes out again another special teams fumble by Ohio State And the Spartans are set up Monty Nicholson Made the recovery what's going on with the Buckeye special teams Don Trey Wilson is not taking care of the football. There's initial contact right there. He's still up 
looked like Chris Fry again involved in knocking that ball loose. 23s there. There's the initial contact. And Dontre Wilson, who's undersized as a return man, doesn't get down and protect the football. And the ball's on the ground again, and the Spartans take advantage of the opportunity. Two turnovers now for Ohio State. Not just turnovers, but special teams turnovers. You, you fumble a punt like that or a kickoff like that, it is usually disastrous. Spartans up seven, set up in the red zone. Cook, a first down throw, delivers over the middle, into traffic, a dangerous play. Tried to fit it in there to McGarrett Kings Jr. Von Bell in the coverage. Chip Kelly and the Eagles hosting the Panthers. A good one on Monday Night Football, 8.15 Eastern time. You're right about Connor Cook trying to, that was a tight window he tried to squeeze that into. Remember the last drive, three for three in passing. He ran the ball four times. All four times he ran the football resulted in a first down. You see tonight, Kirk, Heather reported to us that the Tony Lippett appeared to be limping a bit, didn't look quite right, doesn't have a catch tonight. And he is the dominant weapon typically for Cook. Handed off inside. This is Kings, and the receiver darts forward, dives down to the 11-yard line. It'll be third down and short. Kings as a receiver, but is basically as a receiver lines up out there and has the ability of a running back, but they'll, they'll motion around. They're very, very multiple, whether it's jet sweeps, handing the ball off to wide receivers, or motioning them as they did there with Kings back into the backfield. Because of that explosiveness, they'd like to get his hands on the football. Mumphrey motions in. They hand it coming back this way to Langford. First down and touchdown. Flag is down, though. The flag is down at about the 13-yard line. This may come back. Yeah, it's a hold by Jack Allen, the center, who is pulling around the left end. He got a hold of the corner, Eli Apple. Holding. 66. Third down. You, you don't see centers polling very often, but Jack Allen has that kind of athletic ability. Usually very, very sound and does a great job. Here he is right here. He's going to pull around, and this is the man that he gets locked up with, Eli Apple, who's trying to contain the play and not let the play get to the outside. He grabs him around the neck and pulls him down. Pretty easy call for the official. Very well drilled, sure was. Very well drilled offensive line. Mark Staten is the offensive line coach. It's a smart group. Don't often make mistakes like that, taking the touchdown off the board. So it's third and 13. Cook has time. Goes to the end zone. Beautiful throw laying out, trying to make a diving catch was Josiah Price. Crowd wanted interference as Price is slow to get up. Fourth down. You know, he talked about Tony Lippett up to this point having a quiet night, but Joey Bosa haven't seen much of him at all. And it's not just been against Jack Conklin. Donovan Clark also doing a good job of holding up in pass protection, but we have not called Joey Bosa's name at all, especially on those third downs when Ohio State needs pressure on Connor Cook. That line is doing a good job of taking care of, for the most part anyway, Connor Cook. So a field goal attempt from 39 from the slumping Michael Geiger, who certainly has the coach's confidence. His misses have been narrow. This one starts left and stays left. And they got a problem at kicker now for a guy who missed only one of his 16 attempts last season. Now he's just 7 of 13. Ohio State turns it over on the kickoff. It looks like Michigan State's going to be able to capitalize. Probably a touchdown, at the very least a field goal. And they come away with nothing. Buckeyes ball. Chris Cotter in studio with a Dr. Pepper conference update. Let's start the SEC. Amari Cooper, beautiful after the catch. Spin move at the 12-yard line. He goes in for 23 yards out. 7-7, seven to seven, Alabama and LSU in Baton Rouge. Meanwhile, in the Big 12, you've got TCU and K-State. Trevon Boykin up and over the top. He scores his third touchdown of the day. 24-7, Horn Frogs on top, guys. Chris, thank you. What a car wheel play by Boykin. We saw rally to beat West Virginia last week. 
Barrett a first down throw on a slant complete running free is Michael Thomas to the 40 a foot race and Thomas will win it. Seventy nine yards for Keyshawn Johnson's nephew his seventh touchdown of the season. Wow. They Calhoun is down again for the second time. We talked about how they felt they could attack Darian Hicks, the field corner. You either go after the safeties or you go after the field corner. Here's Jalen Marshall. He will take his man with him, and that creates the one-on-one -on -one opportunity where Ohio State feels they can make plays. Thomas, who's been coming on this year, has really grown up the quick slant to the inside. Hicks misses the tackle in the open field. And how about Thomas's speed? It's 6'3", 205 pounds. He outruns Curtis Drummond to get to the end zone. But how physical he was there. A nice route to the inside. A missed tackle by Hicks. And there's the speed by Michael Thomas. I'm not sure he'll be as good as his uncle, Keisha, but he is an imposing, impressive-looking guy. 79 yards, Kirk, the longest play the Spartans have given up this season. It's the longest catch for Thomas, of course. And Nuremberger a chance to tie things again. And Michigan State keeps jumping in front by a touchdown. Buckeyes keep tying it back up. 21 apiece. Go to Chris Felica, the Bear, for an Affleck trivia question. Chris, what do you got this Hello week? Hello, gentlemen. It's time for tonight's Affleck trivia question. With the win tonight, Mark D'Antonio will improve to 3-3 three and three versus Ohio State as Michigan State head coach. Who is the last Spartan head coach to have a winning record against the Buckeyes while Michigan State head coach? Duffy Doherty, Bear? That's going Usually going the back. answer to all things like that is Duffy Doherty. <laughs> right. I don't or, know. or it could be one of those trick, tricky, like Bobby Williams played him once or twice. No, I, I know Saban had a big win here in 99 when Michigan State. That was the last time Michigan State was the highest-ranked team in this matchup. Chris, what, what is the answer? The answer is, indeed, for tonight's Affleck like career question, Nick Saban. 2-1, ah. and one, three games. I was hoping I was going to get a Biggie Munn guest playing ah. off of what happened a couple weeks ago. But, yeah. but good job. Again, partial credit for you, Chris. Only 2-1. Only and one. He only played three times. Remember the big, was it 98 or 99, the big one, where they beat him in 90, Columbus? 98 was the big one in Columbus. Yeah. Here, you're so official when you do that. He's right in the script, isn't he? I mean, he is official. He's got a sweater on. He looks the part. Looking good, Bear. <laughs> 319 before halftime. You can see keeps surging in front. Ohio State keeps answering. Boy, when you play man-to-man -man coverage and you, and, and you just kind of live on the edge, your corners better hold up on an island. And right now, Darian Hicks is becoming an issue for Pat Narduzzi's defense. Length for the stutter step. Speaking of the edge in an island, you just wonder when is Tony Lippett going to shake free, make a play, or is that leg not 100%? Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Whether you're going for it from a few yards out or from miles away, go with the tire with superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Could be a combination of see if Lippett and whether or not uh, that injury is causing him to be a step or two slow, or Duran Grant. A senior with experience matched up with him and has been again following him all over the field doing a heck of a job. Wilk delivers far side right into traffic and right on cue. Lippitt makes his first catch. Grant was right with him. Uh, that, that's a perfect ball or it's an incompletion. Up at the top of the screen. Grant is right there stride for stride. That ball's thrown to the backside shoulder which is why Lippitt's able to hold on to that football and it came out in a hurry before I think he even came out of his break. Throw. It's a screen batted down. Getting the big hand up was Michael Bennett. Lippitt is the best big play receiver in the Big Ten, finally on the board, but only 11 yards there. Heather? Well, meanwhile, a note on, on Michigan State's defense. Defensive end Shalik Calhoun has pain on the interior of his left knee. They thought about putting the neoprene sleeve brace on. He shook him off. He's testing it right now, hoping to return when Michigan State's defense takes the field. Looks eager to get back out there on his feet, shifting around. Buckeyes show pressure on second and ten. Cook steps up, delivers over the middle, incomplete. Tried to get it to Lippitt. Again, Durant 
with close coverage. This is outstanding coverage by Duran Grant with the right hand. Again, he's locked up against one of the better receivers in the Big Ten. Comes around with a right hand. He was physical on the route. Let him be able to run his route once he cut to the middle, but did not interfere at all with Lippitt. Got around Lippitt and knocked the ball away with his right hand. Grant from Akron is good buddies with Connor Cook. They've trained together as high school players, played in an all-star game together. But he broke up a nice little dart from Cook to set up third and ten. Father played at Michigan yep. State as well. Ted Jones, a wide receiver yeah. for the Big Green. But guys seem to come across the line. A free play fired incomplete. It'll be third and five now. I think that was Joey Bosa trying to get a jump. Again, we talked about him having a, a quiet night. I think he may have. Offside. Defense. Number 97. Five yard penalty. Third down. No tackles yet, Kirk, but a penalty. Yeah, that's that's not necessarily a great first half. Again, it's a 60 minute game, but. He's probably frustrated trying to do the best he can on third down to pin his ears back and try to get some pressure and just jump the gun there. Michigan State will get another chance here at third down. Let's see if Ohio State brings the blitz. Typically when they do on third down, they like to bring it with Darren Lee. Third and medium hasn't been a real good situation for the Spartans offense, surprisingly. Cook in the pocket delivers again incomplete for some reason. Although they're great on third and short and really good on third and long plays like that have, have troubled this offense this year. They sure have and I don't know if he just doesn't look settled in the in the pocket. I found it interesting that Joey Bosa who's a defensive end is lined up as a middle linebacker right here and they blitz him up the middle. They move Darren Lee up to the outside trying to give the Michigan State offensive line a different look and maybe try to create some confusion with their protection. But nonetheless that time Connor Cook felt the heat and just and could not find a rhythm there. The ball goes thrown in. This ball's thrown into the ground. Buckeyes get the ball back. Sadler, they only had 10 guys on the field. Ran a man out late on punt coverage. And the lefty boots it down low. Angle taken at the 10 yard line by Jalen Marshall. Marshall cuts it back. Still running. Jalen Marshall showing the strength and the speed. Finally wrestled down to the 35, but about a 26 yard return. Final two minutes before halftime. Get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN. 10 Eastern time, Sunday NFL countdown. Presented by Snickers, Chris Berman and the guys. News, updates, predictions right up until kickoff. Also on the Watch ESPN app. So Connor Cook is a 61% passer. Only 6 of 16 in this first half. And good news is that Shalik Calhoun's going to give it a go back out there. Ohio State has scored. A couple times tonight in a hurry a minute one and also another drive at 11 seconds so they're thinking about points here with just under two minutes to go and two timeouts. Barrett play action. Fires near sideline nobody there. Dontre Wilson that time just did not run a route. That's a problem. Yeah, he, I think he's having a little bit of a, of a rough first half. Ohio State unable to get the ball to that H back spot. Part of their plan tonight, and anybody who plays Michigan State, that inside receiver's got to make plays. Up to this point, most of the receptions have gone out to the outside of Devin Smith and Michael Thomas. In fact, all of them have. Second and ten, pressure off the edge. Buckeyes pick it up, but Barrett delivers a strike. Receiver's knee was down. Michael Thomas right when he made the catch. So it's third and short. Nice job of picking up the blitz. Right guard, as you said, Chris, Pat Elfline came over. I thought you might see a side adjust, but this offensive line has really grown up from where they were in week two against Virginia Tech with four new starters to having an, almost a season under their belt. A lot better communicating, especially on the road. Empty backfield on second and two. Spartans pressure up the middle. Barrett rolls out and fires complete. Evan Spencer, the steady senior, has a first down. Good idea by Tom Herman and Urban Meyer to move the launch point, move the quarterback away from the pressure. And again, there's soft coverage from the field corner Hicks. He's had a rough night tonight in coverage, so they're trying to help him out by getting him off the line of scrimmage. Now he's up tight against Michael Thomas, who he gave up a touchdown to. 
Eric Rolls trying to get the ball on the run to Hireman. Minute two before halftime. Ohio State has a couple of timeouts. I love Pat Narduzzi's approach to defense. His corner to the field has had a rough night tonight. Instead of changing or giving up on him, he keeps him out there, continues to play his defense. You beat him for a touchdown for a big play. It's not as if he's going to abort and say, hey, guys, we got to get out of this defense. He's going to stick, stick to his guns and look up here how tight that coverage is. That guy's already with more yards in this first half than Michigan State gives up on average for a whole game. 288 total offense. Play action. Barrett loops downfield. Throws for Smith. Touchdown! J.T. Barrett with beautiful touch on deep balls tonight. That's what you've got to do against this Michigan State defense. You've got to be able to take some shots downfield, and you got to hit them. Last year in Indianapolis, they had these same shots, and they missed them. Whether it was a, a drop ball or an errant pass, the way you attack Michigan State against man-to-man -man coverage is you've got to take some big plays, and a lot of times to the inside wide receivers matched up against the safeties. Some of these Spartan defenders said this week they think Barrett tougher to defend than Braxton Miller. That might raise some eyebrows to the Buckeye fans, but these are some pretty throws tonight from number 16. Buckeyes in front. Well, here's the matchup right here with R.J. Williamson against, again, a fast wide receiver in Devin Smith. He's going to go right by him. The safety will not have time to get over there. And it's a great throw by J.T. Barrett because of the way he uses his eyes to freeze this safety right in the middle, and now he gives, has enough room there for Devin Smith, and the ball's got to be thrown on a line. He can't put it up in the air to give Drummond time to come over. He puts it on a line or Devin Smith, perfect timing with the speed. And again, he's probably the fastest receiver on the Ohio State roster, matched up against R.J. Williamson, who's a safety in coverage. It's by design by Tom Herman and Urban Meyer to get that matchup, and that time they were able to capitalize. What a first half for Smith. Targeted seven times. He's caught six of them. For 129 yards. Barrett only has 10 completions, but average 23.2 per completion. A couple of touchdowns. That one was 44 yards. Yeah. They played from behind the whole first half. Now have their first lead. It's a short kickoff. Taken at the eight yard line by an RJ Shelton, who's wrapped up quickly. Great tradition of receivers at the Ohio State University. Uh, that's amazing. You look at these guys, Ohio State, over the years. There's a lot more receivers on that list. My, my good buddy Joey Galloway, I got to throw on that list. But Santonio Holmes, Devin Smith. He's going to pass Chris Carter before he's done yeah. this season. Yep. A ways to go to catch David Boston. Add to the play. Personal foul. Michigan, number 22. That's a distance Careful. to the goal. Well, booing a big First time down. for the call. The fact that he said Michigan. Yeah. They won't like that here. No. You don't want to say that. So with 51 seconds before halftime, D'Antonio has got the scowl back on the face. Likely to be conservative. They'll get the ball to begin the second half, but boy, some lightning strikes by Barrett to Smith and Ohio State in front now. JT Barrett, we asked Tom Herman, what would you say now that he's about nine games into his freshman year? What, what what's his strength? Toughness? and accuracy, the two things that he pointed out. I think we've seen a lot of that here in this first half from J.T. Barrett. Langford spins ahead. These fans just not used to seeing this, and Pat Narduzzi in the booth watches his guys give up 332 first half yards to Ohio State. Again, they're only allowing for a whole game 279 coming in. They, they have not faced an offense other than Marcus Mariota, who had an ability to attack them vertically downfield. Ohio State with J.T. Barrett and this group of wide receivers, that was their plan, and that's what they've done so far in this first half. Timeout. Chance to check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. Chris, time for Getting It Done, brought to you by Wells Fargo. And TCU's Aaron Green getting it done. In the stead of B.J. Catalan, who's out in this game, Green takes the handoff around the right side, cuts it back left 65 yards later, and the Horn Frogs 
are starting to look like super frogs right now. 31-14 over K-State. Getting ready to start on ESPN. Marcus Mariota, the Ducks in Salt Lake City taking on the Utes. They're going to kick off just after 10 o'clock. We'll keep you updated as this game progresses throughout the night, Chris. All right, great job, Chris. The Ducks, of course, in that bracket position moving in ahead of Alabama and TCU. But the Horn Frogs making a statement trying to match what Baylor did earlier today, hammering the Sooners in Norman. Of course, they have that narrow head-to-head -head win over TCU. Langford breaks free, has a first down after the 28-yard line with 41 seconds to go. Let's see if the Spartans spend the timeout, try to take his deep shot here brought up an is interesting point which will be a big topic over the weekend and into Tuesday night people forget that Baylor TCU Baylor beat TCU in a, a shootout was it 61 to 58 yeah, 21 points down in the fourth quarter they came back and all the focus is on TCU but as the bear just whispers in my ear the non-conference scheduling that Baylor has opted for could come back to backfire on him Langford Breaks free, out near a first down with 15 seconds and see if Michigan State does spend a timeout. Not a great deal of urgency here, trailing for the first time tonight. Take a look at this week's rankings from the committee, brought to you by Capital One. And earlier we talked about Auburn losing for a second time, two fumbles in the closing minutes. They usually win games like that in strange ways. They lost one in a strange way. The ball snapped off of Nick Marshall's leg as they were trying to go down and kick a tying field goal. Alabama now in front of LSU after trailing 7-0. And, and what's crazy is we, we knew this was going to be a big day, and we still have four weeks to go. And, and usually in November, that's when you see things you think might, this might happen, and the other thing happens. We're going to still see upsets all along the way. Uh, but even tonight, Oregon's playing Utah in Salt Lake. Keep an eye on that game as well. And an opportunity for the winner of this game. Michigan State in better position coming in. But Ohio State, if they would come in here and beat Michigan State on the Spartans' home field, that's a massive uptick, I think, in the, in the minds of the committee. If you like Michigan State sitting there at eight, why wouldn't you put Ohio State in that position if they get the win here? Yeah, 30 more minutes to go. Yeah. We'll see what happens. But if. but if they do, you're talking about going into their stadium at night. And I think the committee's been sitting there waiting to see Ohio State play in another game since the Virginia Tech game week two. They haven't had an opportunity to really show their talents. Cook, flush out, fires. Diving attempt, but it's incomplete at the 40-yard line with eight seconds to go. Price could not quite come up with it. You know, really, for both of these teams, they, they've been sitting back and waiting for November 8th to, to go up against a quality opponent to be able to state their case. Winner comes out of this game in a very unique position and a pretty good argument by the time it's all said and done. Perhaps still needing some help, but again, help is arriving every week. You have three Ohio State players on the goal line. That's what I call a three deep zone. Yeah, they are all the way back there. Let's see if Connor Cook, who's got a tremendously strong arm, tries for a Hail Mary. Lots of crazy things have happened in the north end zone of this stadium. They celebrate them on the wall of the, right. of the uh, recruiting center here. Take a quick timeout with eight seconds to go. That's what the Hail Mary down there against Wisconsin. That's right. Given by Cousins. I was standing in this very spot when that happened. I had a ringside seat, which is <laughs> very enjoyable. We talked about Joe Thomas Barrett, what he brings, the skill set. He's had it all on display tonight. He sure has. He got to the corner for a touchdown. He showed his leg drive and his power. But I think late here in this first half, you've seen him be able to throw the football around. He's 10 of 17, 232 yards, made some big plays, one to Michael Thomas, the last to Devin Smith, as Ohio State has kind of exploded here for 21 points in the second quarter. And JT Barrett, one thing about him, See a look in his eyes. He is a calm, cool customer considering he's a freshman on the road in this environment. Keep in mind that Ohio State, with a seven-point lead here, surviving two uncharacteristic first-half turnovers. Spartans able to cash one in for seven points. A missed field goal by Michael Geiger, part of the story here in the opening half. But mostly it's been about J.T. Barrett. 
Ohio State's three defenders have moved up to the 25 yard line no longer waiting at the goal line as Cook steps up delivers and throws it into an open area with two seconds to go Cook went down after he threw the ball Ohio State actually got some pressure Just rushing three that time I don't know why Michigan State has the ball at their own what 40 yard line those guys initially were all the way back at the goal line I think it makes a little bit more sense to move them up where they might be in the action there about 20 25 yards now Michigan State just shuts it down so very exciting first half seven combined touchdowns Ohio State with the yardage edge of almost 100, 332 total offense, averaging almost 10 yards a play. Wow. Let's go to Heather Cox with Mark D'Antonio. Chris, thank you. Coach, your defense has given up over 300 yards in the first half. Where do you need to tighten things up defensively in the second? Well, you know, too many big plays. We go from being up by 14 to all of a sudden being down now. You know, so the big swing on the thing. So, uh, you know, we just got to get it done. We got to regroup. We know be be, be a big push here. Got to push back. That said, what is your message to your team in the locker room? Keep playing. Yep. Coach, thank you. Chris? Succinct, as you might expect. And Michigan State gets the ball to start that second half, right? Indeed. But Langford and the Spartans in a seven point hole. After these messages, the Capital One halftime report. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit, and Heather Cox. JT Barrett, the story of an exciting, if somewhat sloppy, first half. The quarterback for the Buckeyes, two touchdown passes, two touchdown runs. Three times Ohio State was down seven, take their first lead late in the half. Unbelievable uh, performance by JT Barrett. And what we're learning here is when he has time to throw, the Ohio State offensive line did a great job there in the first half. He's got the receivers to try to be able to exploit man-to-man -man coverage from Michigan State. On the other side, I think for Michigan State, look at Connor Cook. He's not been able to get his main target, Tony Lippett, the football. One reception in the first half. I think you'll see them go back to what they did early in the game, balanced attack with Jeremy Langford running and getting the ball one-on-one -on -one to the outside. But in the first half, Duran Grant, deserves a lot of credit for the way he defended Lippitt in that first half. Spartans seven penalties, including a costly one that nullified a Langford touchdown run. Ohio State surviving two fumbles on returns. Kyle Clinton debuted away to begin the third quarter. A tight formation for that coverage team. Trying to contain Shelton, who takes it at the goal line. And crosses to the 23. Our Pacific Life game summary 101 passing yards for the Spartans offense, but Ohio State grinding out 332. Again, that's more than Michigan State typically gives up in an entire game. And they knew coming in they would have to try to hit some home runs with their passing game. And as we said, coming back here in the second half, Barrett's had time to throw and they've been able to exploit that coverage one on one. And how about the speed? Michael Thomas and Devin Smith, really the two receivers that had the big first half. And let's go back to Cook. It's about Langford and about balance and trying to slow down the Ohio State defensive line. Langford takes it. He wore down Ohio State's defense in the second half of that Big Ten championship game at 106 yards after halftime. Heather? Chris Urban Meyer is very proud of his freshman quarterback, JT Barrett, especially in this environment, saying our O-line has done a great job giving him time and protecting him to make smart throws. He said, but we've got to be careful. We expect Michigan State is going to, quote, blitz our tails off in the second half. And a quick note, guy, guys, Michigan State's Tony Lippett, I talked to their head athletic trainer, Sally Noble. He is good to go in the second half. Well, he on cue makes a catch. 
muscles out to the 40-yard line. They hope he's good to go and much more productive than he was in the first 30. Yeah, Grant again isolated one-on-one -on -one with him. Keep in mind, Lippin is 6'3", about 190 pounds. That time, Grant just lost his footing. Good job coming back to the ball and keeping his footing by Tony Lippin. He is going to become a big factor in this game. Whether he makes receptions or not, Michigan State, to do what they need to do, will be going to him quite a bit here in this second half. Excellent chemistry with Cook built over some long hot days in the summer throwing and catching again and again Langford spins Still running hard charging back still alive gains about nine on first down Great effort here, but it's also a very nice job by the offensive line on that right side. Bruce, Jack Allen, Donovan Clark creating some seams there to give the elusive Langford and the powerful Langford a little bit of room to wiggle through. But you can see again, when he gets to that second level, you better wrap him up and you better get after his legs because if you're going to go up to his upper body, he's going to carry it for another three or four yards. Kirk, it's a 13th consecutive conference game that Langford has gone over 100 yards. Hand it to him again. Hit in the backfield. Ball comes out. Scramble for it. And Michigan State dodges a bullet. Allen fell on it. The center preventing a turnover. Joshua Perry knocked it out of the running back's hands. Yeah, I think I think Ohio State, one of their defenders, it might have been Tyvis Powell, tried to pick it up and scoop and score instead of just jumping on the football. It's out. 23 comes in here late and tries to scoop and score instead of just pouncing on it. Left the ball on the ground and the big center. Saw the ball, looked up, and just secured it. But Tyvis Powell had a chance to jump on top of it right there. It was Washington who forced the fumble. Went on the recovery. Instead of third and very short, now third and nine. Play clock ticking down on Cook. It's at three. Pressure. In the pocket, he delivers. Strike. Caught. First down at the Ohio State 40-yard line. Aaron Burbridge. And Cook had to stand in there and deliver with the Buckeyes closing in. What a great job of protecting on third and long. Ohio State did come with the blitz. He has just enough time. See how he went over top of Lippitt? I mean, the ball goes right over top of Lippitt's head, right into the waiting arms of Aaron Burbridge for the first down. You get 19 and third and nine. Play took a while to develop against a blitz. Cook showed his toughness and his vision again downfield looking past the blitz to his receivers first catch for Burbridge Cook still got it delivers in traffic another strike it's a short game and Garrett Kings and we're seeing Connor Cook after a struggle in the first half come out sharp but that is going to come back a hold on the Spartans offensive line holding offense number 76 10 yard penalty first down First time tonight we've seen Joey Bosa have an influence on this football game. The right tackle matched up one-on-one -on -one against Bosa. Bosa using some quickness to the edge. And the big right tackle locked up and brought down Bosa to prevent him from getting to his quarterback. Quiet night again for Bosa. But that time, just, just the fact that he was out there putting pressure on the quarterback. Michigan State ended up having the hold and it pushes him back. It's a second costly hold. It D'Antonio made reference to the one that nullified the touchdown run by Langford. Play clock at two. Got to hurry. They get it off. And on first and 20. High delivery. Almost intercepted. How did he not pick it off? Apple right between the one and the three with lots of green grass in front of him. I, you know, I don't know. I don't, other than Luke Fickle tells us he likes to recruit guys who play baseball because they can catch. I don't know what Eli, Eli Apple is thinking. I don't know if he's thinking about going to score a touchdown. Sure he was. I mean, you got to make the play before you take off and run with it. Right, as you said, Chris, that hit him right between the one and the three. Kirk, we're beginning to see Bosa make an impact. He was off the edge pressuring Cook that time. Second and 20. Over the middle, caught. Trying to make a play is Burbridge at inside the 40. So Burbridge has gotten involved as well as Lippitt here early in the third quarter. It's still going to be third and eight. That time they actually drop Joey Bosa in coverage. And it looked like they were going to rush four, but just trying to change up their looks. They tried to get Bosa 
kind of in a, almost a spy position to try to catch maybe an underneath pass, but Connor Cook doing a good job of seeing him and getting the ball in the hands of the talented receiver Burbridge. Third and eight. Buckeyes rush four. Cook has time, delivers a strike. First down. McGarrett Kings, and we're seeing a different Connor Cook here in the third quarter. Well, he's a little bit more assertive, and he's getting rid of the football. Michigan or Michigan State does a good job of going after the middle of the Ohio State defense. They had a linebacker, McMillan, who blitzed, and there was nobody left in the middle. Good throw. Langford here. No game. Let's face it, he got very lucky, Cook did, with Apple dropping that easy interception. But you are seeing a, a more assertive quarterback here so far in the first five minutes of the second half. I also think that, you know, a lot of times when you when you get up to the line of scrimmage and you get a quarterback who's maybe had maybe not quite the first half he's used to having, used to making a few more plays, they have a little bit more urgency to getting in and out of the huddle and getting up to the line of scrimmage, going on a fast count. That sometimes can help the rhythm of a quarterback to try to get him back into that flow and find that zone again. Lip it to the bottom of the screen, the left of Cook, empty backfield. Now they motion Shelton in and give it to him. Heavy traffic drives for about three. It'll be third and long again. McMillan on the tackle. A heck of a battle, kind of a game within the game is that Michigan State experienced offensive line, big and physical, led by Jack Conklin, the sophomore left tackle, going up against this Ohio State front. Not just the defensive line, Washington, Bennett, Miller, and Bosa, but even the linebackers involved, Darren Lee, Curtis Grant, Raekwon McMillan, Josh Perry. It's been a physical night in the trenches on this side of the ball. Just made a third and nine. Needs seven yards this time. Hook in the pocket, delivers, incomplete. Excellent timing there, Duran Grant got there, broke up his good buddy Cook's pass, it's fourth down. And instead of playing man, which they have played quite a bit tonight, remember we talked about Grant following Lippitt and playing a lot of man-to-man? -man. This time is a change-up, Chris Ash goes along with Luke Fickle, goes with a zone, and it puts Grant in a position to be able to make the play. Earlier, Michael Geiger from this same position, the left hash, missed one. And Mike Black, our, our spotter here, former Boise State kicker, points out this has been a trouble spot. He's missed four times on field goals from the left hash in recent games. That time makes the correction and makes the field goal. Spartans back within four, midway third quarter. Tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Goodyear is in as the proud sponsor of the Goodyear Cotton Bowl and the college football playoff. Goodyear and the blimp have been associated with so many top sports events for decades. It's fitting they should help inaugurate this exciting era of the college football playoff. Goodyear more driven. Michigan State driving 56 yards methodically in 12 plays. 622 to cut into Ohio State's lead. Barrett will get the ball for the first time in the second half now. Wilson spins, hammered down across the 30 yard line. Well, Ohio State got going, always playing from behind, a four play, 71 yard touchdown drive after a punt, an eight play drive. They had a third and 23 conversion. Then you had the 79-yard slant to Thomas for a touchdown. And the go-ahead drive, a five-play 64-yarder. In their last three possessions, you see, they've scored touchdowns. And, and they have picked on the Michigan State secondary, most specifically Darian Hicks and R.J. Williamson in man-to-man -man coverage. Let's see if Pat Narduzzi makes any adjustments to try to protect against that man-to-man -man coverage that got, again, uh, exposed a bit there in the first half. Barrett still got it. Fires far side, a dangerous throw. Trying to get the ball to Marshall, but the senior safety, Curtis Drummond, was there. And Curtis Drummond is their better covering safety. They went after Williamson, the other safety, quite a bit in that first half. But, boy, Curtis Drummond is a great player, a senior. Another Ohio player playing for Mark D'Antonio in East Lansing. The ball was behind. And 
Truman got a great jump on it, got a hand on that, knocked it away. One of five all Big Ten Spartans last year in that defense. Elliott muscles ahead. Ezekiel Elliott almost broke free. They finally wrestle him down at midfield. Darian Hicks, the corner, perhaps saved the touchdown. Yeah, nice chalk by, job by the right guard, Pat Elfline, but also Taylor Decker, the left tackle, comes up and does a nice job of picking up a linebacker. And there's the toughness, there's the physicality from Ezekiel Elliott. He's not just a back with speed. At 225 pounds, he has the ability also to be able to break through those arm tackles and carry defenders. 11 yards of carry tonight for Elliott against this tough Spartan run D. Barrett pitches far side. Pitch made by Hireman, the tight end, his first. Darian Harris knocks it out. But boy, Tom Urban Kirk in a nice play calling rhythm here. He sure is. And it's not just trying to have balance, Chris. It's, it's a variety of formations. It's a lot of different looks. It's moving JT Barrett from, from uh, left to right, sometimes from the pocket. I think anytime you're going after a Michigan State defense, you have to have an ability to be versatile with the run and the pass and, and different looks. Right now they have trips, three receivers into the short side, into the boundary up at the top. A look they haven't shown all night. Second down handoff. Elliott cuts it back, kind of bumps into a blocker there, the tackle Baldwin. Ed Davis drops from third down and about two and a half. Sometimes when you give a different look like that late in the game, you're just trying to see the reaction and the coverage from the defense, and you might be setting something up the next time later in the game and just kind of getting a feel for an unusual formation that you might use because trips into the boundary is not something you see very often from an Ohio State offense. They need two on this third down. This is the quarterback run game typically out of empty on third and short. Spartans ready for it, but Barrett cuts it back and makes the first down. So difficult to stop even when the entire stadium knows what's coming. Yeah, you know what's coming. Does a nice job of following the block there, the tight end. Hireman, but just really the vision there, the natural running instincts of J.T. Barrett. Remember, he ran a very similar offense in high school down in Texas. Tore an ACL in his fourth game as a senior. Red-shirted all of last year. Was expecting to be a backup this year to Braxton Miller. And Braxton Miller gets hurt with 11 days until their opening game. He hadn't played in two years for the most part. Is just getting better almost with every single rep that he takes. Play action. Barrett has time on first down. Loops it downfield for Evan Spencer. No! Two receivers converge. It was Spencer and Dontre Wilson in the same spot. Wilson dropped it at the three. Well, it, and we got a Michigan State defender down. It may have been the defender that was with Dontre Wilson. You're right, Chris. I, Wilson, I think, was spooked by Evan Spencer. He tried to still catch the ball. But the, the play took so long because the coverage was so good that Wilson broke away late from the defender who actually went down, and he's still down. Frustrating night for Dontre Wilson. A couple of drops. He's the returner that had problems on that, that punt return when it hit the ground. Yeah. It's R.J. Williamson who had him in coverage. Again, good to see him up. It's been a rough night for the junior from Dayton. He'll walk off very slowly. They see a true, true freshman now, Monty Nicholson. They have to jump in, fill in. He's played a lot of football this year, so he has a lot of reps under his belt, but the coverage was so good. I think JT Barrett was fortunate to have the amount of time that he had to be able to give the play even more time to give Wilson a chance to break away eventually from Williamson. But Dante, Should have been caught down Dante there. Wilson three, just, yeah, Dante Wilson couldn't hold on to the football. Instead of first and goal, it's second and ten. Barrett drops back, takes off, gets a nice block from Elliott, dives down three yards short of the first down. Third and short. 
Tom Herman told us Zeke Elliott, 15. What do you like about Zeke Elliott? He said he's the most physical back I've ever been involved with without his hands on the ball. Whether it's picking up a blitz pickup, blocking for a quarterback like that on the quarterback draw. He's a physical runner, but he's even more impressed with what he can do when he doesn't have the, his hands on the football and how unselfish he is with the way he blocks. Yeah, broke his wrist in camp, played right through that. He's now in the slot to the left of Barrett in third down. JT steps up, delivers near side, and coming back for the ball this time, collecting it is Wilson. First down at the 16. And yet two Michigan State defenders get caught up with another receiver, Corey Smith. See him how they both stayed up towards the front of coverage. And JT Barrett went to the last second for Dontre Wilson to break free from the coverage. Two defenders stay up tight. He's reading that flat defender who came up in coverage, went right over top of it, an easy throw, and that time Wilson holds on to it. He's finally on the board with his first catch. That was a tougher one than he had down at the two-yard line a minute ago. Like Wilson's going to take the direct snap. They've used two different players in the Wildcat formation. It's a reverse. Smith's going to throw it. Now Evan Spencer pulls it down. He was looking in the end zone for another receiver, but turns it into a positive play. Going back to what you said about Tom Herman really dialing it up. And I think they knew coming in that they're going to have to unload the playbook. A lot of different looks. We've seen Jalen Marshall. Now you see Dontre Wilson in the Wildcat trying to potentially throw the ball off of reverse there with Wilson at the quarterback spot. Barrett back at quarterback now. Elliott. First and goal at the two. As the Buckeyes offense continues to roll, trying to make it a double digit lead here late in the third quarter. They're going to go tempo here, going to go fast with JT Barrett. That zone read has been very effective all year for the Ohio State offense. I think Barrett feels at ease running that and stays on the ride very long and is patient with it. Barrett again, follows blocks, knocked down at the one. This is a proud tough defense and Ohio State trying to make it five touchdowns in the last six possessions in East Lansing talking so much about Barrett and the skill but Chris we cannot say enough about the Ohio State offensive line and the way they have performed tonight it's a different unit from where they were at the beginning of the year these guys are playing as a group and as one Barrett hammered that time right at the line of scrimmage by Shalik Calhoun is playing through some pain tonight again very slow to get up it'll be third and goal that's how you use your hands as a defensive lineman and your speed Calhoun known as a pass rusher that time he just went right around Daryl Baldwin he's used his hands and laid him and made the play 13th play of the Buckeyes first drive in this second half foot and a half from the goal line Elliot and Ohio State stretches the lead and a shrug Bosa style from the running back Nothing to shrug about. Just marvel at this offensive performance by Ohio State so far. No doubt about it. Ezekiel Elliott almost averaging nine yards a carry. And that was a 13-play drive that took over six minutes off the clock. And instead of settling for a field goal, the Buckeyes get a touchdown and have a chance to go up 11. This crowd is stunned and silent. Nuremberger makes it 35-24. The right guard, Elfline, Daryl Baldwin, a good job. You get the left guard, Billy Price, pulling around. I think everybody knew there was a good chance that Elliott would get his hands on the ball. Physical offensive line from Ohio State controlling the line of scrimmage. And there's the shrug. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Aflac. Ask about it at work. And Cadillac. Spartans locker room featuring some military paraphernalia. 
adapted from the U.S. Marine Corps quote, the motto of the green jersey is earned, not given. Tuesday night on ABC, don't miss the all-new episode of Marvel, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., 9 Eastern, here on ABC. Ohio State, underdogs here in East Lansing, came to play. They fell down by a touchdown three separate times in the first half. Finally took the lead. Two long drives in this third quarter. Curve one by each team. But the Buckeyes find the end zone. Up by 11 now. Up 11, 218 remaining in the third quarter. And all of a sudden, urgency for Michigan State is going to have to be on display with that clock winding down. That's for sure, because the defense is not stopping Ohio State at all so far. It's a fun day watching all these playoff impact games inside the All-State Saturday Night Football bus. You can enter the All-State, it's good sweepstakes for a chance to win $100,000, plus a VIP trip to the college football playoff semifinal game at the All-State Sugar Bowl and the national championship game, as well as weekly prizes. Those games will be played indoors. This one is not. Zero percent chance of precipitation tonight, Kirk, so obviously it's snow has begun to fall here in the last few minutes. Just a light snow. It's November. You got a little snow here in Big Ten country. Langford on a first down run gains five. And you said it. They're not used to playing with great urgency at Michigan State because the defense is usually controlling the game. The opposite is happening here. So now Cook and company back to work. All of a sudden, only two minutes left in the quarter. Yeah, I think urgency is important, but at the same point, he's had a rough night. His face was crushed in there. Urgency, but not necessarily getting away from the playbook and getting away from what they're trying to do by still having some balance with the run in the pass. Langford breaks free. Langford has the corner midfield, knocked out at the 41 yard line. So very quickly on the ground, the Spartans are threatening. And that's what I'm talking about. You want to just all of a sudden start to panic. You're down 11 as you close in on the fourth quarter. How about the job of the offensive line there? Travis Jackson really opened that hole up. But again, as we see time after time with Jeremy Langford, he doesn't need a lot of room. And a lot of times that hole's designed to go off to the right, and he'll bounce it wherever he sees brass. And if you don't close your gap and you're not sound, he's going to find a space, and he's going to get some big yards. Cook drops back. Pressure. Spins away, and now he's dropped. And finally a sack. Michael Bennett, the tackle, got him. They lose about five. Tell you, Michael Bennett has had a huge game tonight in the middle. Watch this. Watch the quickness that he uses. Just doesn't give up on the play. And who gave up on it was Connor Cruz. I don't know what he was thinking there. He kind of gave up on it. And the effort, tenacious attitude from Bennett, who, again, is much healthier this year. We've called his name quite a bit, whether it's been rushing the quarterback or being able to get penetration against their running game. Their top sacker, Bosa, has been shut out. But the Buckeyes have two sacks. Against an offensive line that's given up only five all year coming in. Second and 16. Cook delivers near side. A strike. Catch made at the 35 yard line. Spun down is twice the tight end. Well, that sack by Bennett put Cook in a Michigan State offense in that second and long. Now they have a chance here on third down. Let's see if Ohio State, who's been very different this year with their third down package with the addition of Chris Ash to the staff, they've been a lot uh, more aggressive with how they blitz and how they try to affect the offensive line and, and quarterback. Do they sit back with an 11-point lead or do they bring pressure? Again, the Spartans in one of those third and medium situations has given him trouble this year. Cook rolls out and, again, just misfires. we got an experienced, good quarterback, some weapons, but that kind of play has just been a problem all season long for a good offense. Yeah, just a poor decision, and, and uh, you know, that's one that you, you don't see a lot from Connor Cook. He just kind of flipped that ball out there. His receiver, who's covered pretty good, but he just never really gave him much of a chance. Keith Mumphrey that time with tight coverage on the outside for the Ohio State defense. They got to go for it. Eli Apple, they have to. Five seconds in the third quarter, and an important play. Spartans desperate to cut into this lead. It's Mumphrey in motion. Handoff on the reverse. Hill not going to get there. 
gets nothing. Eli Apple has had kind of a tough night. Dropped the obvious pick, but the freshman on the big fourth down stop. And the team pursuit. Apple sets the edge on the outside. Keeps contained, gets around the offensive lineman, and the rest of the Ohio State defense is there. They felt it, surprised maybe by the call that it's a run, but the Ohio State defense wasn't fooled at all, and they get the ball back. Potential upset brewing here as Ohio State up by 11, beginning the fourth quarter in East Lansing. Another potential top 10 team to suffer a second loss and take a major hit in their playoff chances that the Spartans can't rally. So Dr. Pepper championship drive game of the week. Michigan State's defense has to do its part here. They got to get a stop and get the ball back. Five touchdowns for Ohio State in the last six Buckeye possessions. Elliott. Gets the corner, dances out near midfield, is knocked down. Is that going to draw a flag? Yes, it comes in, hit out of bounds by Michigan State. Will improve Ohio State's field position, a loss of poise mistake. No doubt about it. Head to the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty. They added on to the end of the run, first down. But Taylor Decker, the left tackle, does a nice job of pulling around and then the speed again. But this is a poor decision by the true freshman Nicholson just throwing Zeke Elliott to the ground. But that was a well designed play up front. Left tackle pulled around. Ohio State got the corner and Elliott, boy, he's got some great quickness and acceleration. Over 100 yards, Kirk, 109, 9.1 per carry. Barrett, near side to Hireman, who collects the ball, takes his shot immediately from Hicks. Urban Meyer talking about the pain that his team felt in Indy as favorites. Michigan State rallies from behind. Dream ripped away from us. Remember, they would have, in all likelihood, gone and play for the BCS championship against Florida State. Auburn got that ticket. Urban has a 20-game winning streak in the Big Ten regular season games alive, though. One second and five. Marshall, first down. Down to the 10. Whatever Tom Herman is calling, this offense is executing. Yeah, they, they right now have found a rhythm. They found some weaknesses. They get the linebackers out in space. Twan Jones is out there trying to make a play against Jalen Marshall. Great blocks downfield by Jeff Hireman. Another receiver downfield doing his best, Devin Smith, to help out. Ohio State, the one thing they've done, Chris, is get their speed out in space against a very physical Michigan State defense. You got a sub out Marshall who may be cramping up over there. He comes off. First and goal, nose of the ball right at the 10. Elliott falls for three and Michigan State the way things are going really needs to find a way rise up force a field goal attempt keep it at a 14 point game even though there's lots of time to go a lot of time what did she five of the last six possessions for Ohio State's yep. been a touchdown Th this possession right here for Michigan State they, if they don't hold Ohio State to a field goal to keep it a two possession game this game could be over Barrett making a check. Hands it off. Elliott hammered right away. It'll be third and goal. Taiwan Jones stopped him. Michigan State knows exactly what you and I are talking about. They, they, they have that same sense. And Urban Miner's not in any hurry at all working that play clock as much as he can with Barrett. Really, really impressed. Not just with JT Barrett's numbers tonight, but his poise for a freshman. And the way his season has gone, he has made countless good decisions for his team and played with tremendous poise throughout the game. Ezekiel Elliott, the running back, split out way to the left, was uncovered momentarily. Now the Spartans have a man on him. Barrett rolls, delivers, far side, high throw, touchdown! Don Trey Wilson! He has had a rough night. But it's turning around for him. 
And Ohio State stretches the lead. What placement by the quarterback. We just talked about his decision making. How about the placement of the football by an undersized receiver? Dontre Wilson's about 5'9 or 5'10. It's a small, tight window for him to be able to make that throw. Gets the ball out on time, away from the defender. And Wilson, as you said, has had a rough night holding on to the ball, secures potentially the clincher for Ohio State's offense. To the third touchdown pass for Barrett to go with his two touchdown runs looking very much like the all big 10 quarterback and a well-designed play gets the, again the one-on-one -on -one matchup against rj williamson the safety we've talked since the beginning of the game an advantage ohio state would have the inside receivers against the safeties of man coverage and they hit another one well, tomorrow morning 10 eastern sunday nfl countdown presented by snickers also available on the Watch ESPN app. Both these teams with lots of guys in the NFL and no looking in tonight. Boy, plenty of NFL locker rooms have Spartans and Buckeyes and the, the jawing owned by those Michigan State alums ever since uh, last December. It's turning around. Ohio State up by 17. Making a very strong statement. This was a team not considered by the committee a real serious playoff contender before this game. Kickoff. And Shelton will take a knee. One of the craziest plays you'll ever see right now to Chris Cotter in the studio. All right, Chris, the day gets even crazier. AT&T inside the headset over on ESPN. Utah's Kalen Clay is taking it to the house, but he drops the ball a full yard before he gets into the end zone. Oregon's Eric Dargan picks it up. He fumbles it. Eventually, it ends up in the arms of Joe Walker, and he has a caravan down the sideline because all the youths think they're celebrating the touchdown. Utah scores, and this really helped turn things around for the Ducks. They were down 7-0, about to go down 14-0. Now they lead 14-7. Chris? Kalen Clay is one of the best return guys in the country. What a massive mental mistake there. Keep you posted. The Ducks, of course, in playoff position based on this week's rankings. Serious urgency now for Connor Cook, who delivers to Lippitt out across the 40. They must score in this possession, and it would help to score very quickly. Yeah, and now you're talking about almost a two-minute offense approach uh, with Connor Cook. And again, that's where his experience will have to, to pay off for Michigan State. They've got to find some matchups that they like. And they've got to be able to move the ball down the field. And, and again, it's when you're down by this many points late in the game, Things like getting out of bounds and getting first downs and every chance you get a chance to have that clock stop, you got to work with that clock and also at the same time move the ball down the field. Another throw, far side, catch made. Spinning four of first down at the 48-yard line is the tailback Langford. Two good plays to start this drive. And, you know, for Ohio State with Chris Ash and, and Luke Fickle, you wonder what the mindset that they'll have is. You know, their goal has been all along not to give up a lot of big plays through the air. But at the same time, do you get in prevent mode with Luke Fickle, or do you still maintain that aggressive approach that's worked quite often tonight for the Ohio State defense? Cook fires, far side, patient completion, Aaron Burbage. Ohio State led 21-14, so it's been a 28-3 run for Ohio State. You combine that with the fact that Auburn lost for the second time, Notre Dame lost for a second time, ASU and Baylor making big statements, Bama and LSU locked at 10 late in the fourth quarter there. Big statement for TCU as K-State drops out. And how far up will Ohio State zoom if they can hold this lead here? That's what Buckeye fans want to know. The completion limit it tiptoes out short of the marker at the 38. It'll be third and about a yard. Well, if you're sitting in that room with the committee and you're listening around to people talk about each team and you get to Ohio State, you look at the resume. Okay, they're undefeated in the Big Ten. They lost to Virginia Tech, who's 1-4 in, in conference play. How many wins do they have against the top 40? None. Their best win was against Maryland. Now it becomes a different story. Now the committee gets together on Tuesday and they talk about this. If Ohio State holds on to win, now you're talking about going into a top 10 type of team 
in their stadium. Very, very impressive if they're able to hold on here. Power formation for Langford on third and one picks up the first down. Michigan State again, eighth. Ohio State will make a case that if we come in here and dominate the Spartans, why shouldn't we be at least that high? They're never going to win the argument on, on the loss. The quality of no. the loss is ugly. No contender is going to have a loss like Virginia's had. No, no, but, but you know, you have Arizona State out there that's going to become a trendy team. Where they give up 62 yes, to UCLA. True. Hail Mary to beat USC. Uh, they beat Notre Dame today convincingly, but it's the entire body of work. And look what Ohio State's done against inferior opponents. They've blown them out. Cook throws it back far side. Catch made by Price, the tight end. Has a block or two and gets down inside the red zone. This is this is always a threat in Michigan State's arsenal is that throwback. They run this very, very often. Price again, he scored the go-ahead and eventually game-winning touchdown last year against Ohio State in Indianapolis on a delay play down inside that 20-yard line. So that's a lot of times where he makes most of his opportunities. Spartans doing what they have to do to keep their hopes alive here. Two and a half minutes so far. They've marched at 59 yards. On first down, Cook. Fire. So the end zone has a man wide open and Price collects the touchdown after setting it up. So Michigan State still alive. Absolutely. And, and you know, one of the things Ohio State did here is they brought pressure. They get inside a 20 yard line. Ohio State brought the linebackers, picked up perfectly by Jeremy Langford. And how about Price at 6'4, about 250 pounds? Out up against the defensive back and gave him a little shake to the inside and back outside and Cook put it right on the money for the touchdown. Four catches now for Price. That was his fifth touchdown of the season. Geiger to make it an 11 point Ohio State lead. So Michigan State cuts into it. But can they stop the Buckeyes now? Well, you said score fast. Seven plays, 75 yards, a little under three minutes. And as we said, Price with some nifty moves out in space against the corner off the play action. They pick up the blitz. Cook sensed that urgency and got the ball into the end zone for the Spartans. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by... Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Your next truck, Ford F-150. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Chilly night, nice one to fly in the Goodyear blimp. Whether you're going for it from a few yards out or from miles away, Go with the tire with superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Very brief snow shower. I think it's about a three-minute <laughs> snow shower. That's yeah. moved on. Yeah. That was quick. So Michigan State with a quick touchdown drive, and that now makes this the most combined points, 75 of them. East Lansing in this rivalry's history. Too short now. Oh boy, bringing it out. Samuel knocked down. A freshman ended up getting to the 22 yard line. Not what you want to do, perhaps, protecting a lead. Pacific Life game summary looking at the big night for JT Barrett so far. And JT Barrett, a couple touchdowns on the ground, but it's really been his arm tonight, making some great throws and one on one coverage. Three touchdowns on the night. He's been in a groove, and now he takes the field with this 11-point lead late in this game. It'll be interesting again with Tom Herman and Urban Meyer and how they plan to attack with a little over nine minutes to go after Michigan State scores that touchdown. Do they work clock, or do they try to continue to score touchdowns? They run more zone read plays for more yards, more big gains, and more touchdowns than, than anybody in the Power Five conferences. Haven't done as much of that tonight, though. Not as much. I think they've been focused more on some runs built in for Zeke Elliott. He has 112 yards on the night. They've gotten him out on the outside on the perimeter against this Michigan State defense. And, of course, Barrett throwing the football. Question for Tom Herman, how cautious will you be now, Kirk, as you mentioned? 
It's another run for the quarterback. Very safe play, but Barrett breaks a tackle. Gets a block. Gets the corner. JT Barrett down the sidelines. What a monster night for the quarterback down to the 22. Remember, again, Braxton Miller does it in a different way. JT Barrett's a lot nift here, and people want to give him credit. How about that move right there? Corner had a play on it. Then he outruns the freshman safety, gets around him as well. But right here, he's trying to just get a first down. Right there's a first down. Gets away from Trey Wands, outruns Monte Nicholson. Does a good job of staying in bounds to continue to keep that clock moving. But JT Barrett just continues to impress everybody watching. I said fans were worried. How's that left MCL sprain? You've been braced up there the last game. It, it looks fine. Yeah. Just fine. 55 yards on that carry. Elliott dives straight ahead. Again, this is a Michigan State defense. You know, they, they don't do this very often. With Braxton Miller, you're talking about maybe one of the most electrifying players in the country last year with a ball in his hands. This is what he did a year ago. 142 yards on the ground. You can see what Barrett's done through the air. Also on the ground, almost 100 yards himself. In that game against a more veteran Michigan State defense, to be fair, Ohio State was 1 of 10 on third down, 0 and 2 on fourth down. Much more efficient tonight with Barrett's skill set. Second and six. Elliott cuts it back. Zeke Elliott zipping to the end zone. And that could do it for Ohio State. The people that have not seen Ohio State play since Virginia Tech I think they're somewhat mesmerized by this Ohio State offense. I am. <laughs> I, I think everybody is. I think Urban Meyer is. Zeke Elliott running the football. We've seen a decision making by JT Barrett, the big playability from the wide receivers, and let's not forget. The much maligned offensive line after the Virginia Tech game. They've stuck together. They got tested. They went to Penn State, got tested there. They've come together as a group. They should feel very good about the way they played tonight. JT Barrett set this touchdown up with a huge run. We wondered if they'd get a little bit conservative. Would they continue to be aggressive? They got aggressive, but they did it by running the football. And they're up 18 again on Michigan State. Well, the 12-member selection committee for the CFB playoff, a lot to digest. They head down to Dallas for the third consecutive weekend, convene on Monday and Tuesday, then on Tuesday night, you can find out who's in, who's out as of now. 7.30 Eastern time, presented by Vizio, also on the Watch ESPN app. This fellow's been hanging around. He was at our set on game day. He's kind of a, a fixture for Ohio State fans. Did he expect to see seven Buckeye touchdowns tonight? in eight possessions. They no. punted once against this defense. No, but he gets more air time than Brutus. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what, this is the kind of statement that goes beyond just a win on the road against an eighth-ranked team. No doubt. The committee has to recognize offensively and defensively. Shelton, following blocks, gets the corner. Good return, driven out. And a flag comes in very late. Evan Spencer was throwing a block over there for Ohio State. Didn't need to. I think it was maybe a push in the block there against Evan Spencer. Holding number 37. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's the first penalty on a special teams return all season long for Urban Meyer's team. Conference breakdown on the rankings as of last week. SEC was six, but that SEC cannibalization is beginning to happen in that in that West Auburn went down at home to a and they got two losses Bama and LSU late in the game LSU is trying to drive and and get a win over Alabama big 12 statement wins by Baylor and by TCU tonight cook delivers incomplete over the middle this team came in with supreme confidence. We went to both places. I think both sides gave off an air 
that they thought they'd win this game. But I thought particularly here in East Lansing, the Spartans brought a little swagger in off a bye week, off a beat down of Michigan on this field. Well, and I think a lot of that has to do with the way they played last year in, in Indianapolis and then carried it over into Pasadena and won the Rose Bowl. I think they feel very confident who they are. And this is a team that, that's been peaking. They feel they felt very good coming into this game. This is a good Michigan State team. But Ohio State came in with a plan and they've executed. Cook has time, fires down the middle and just over the head of Keith Mumphrey. A smile from Cook, but it's been a frustrating night because he's been in the unusual position of having to play catch up. You know, I, I, Urban Meyer and Mark D'Antonio said this week to us about when you get into these big games, especially in November in the Big Ten, in any game for that matter, in the NFL, it's, it's typically one up front in the trenches. Think about how Ohio State's offensive line has played. As much as we've talked about Barrett, they played incredibly well. Also, Ohio State's defensive line with Bennett, Washington, Bosa, even Steve Miller, they've held up their end of the bargain as well. Third and ten, they bring four. Cook fires over the middle, complete at the 42-yard line. They'll move the chains. Kings made the catch. Michigan State's 14-game Big Ten win streak in deep trouble. So Ohio State continues to play very well as an underdog. Again, Kings makes the catch there at the Buckeyes 40. The last seven times Ohio State's been an underdog very well. Previous six have won four of them. This would be a fifth upset in that span. You know, Urban Meyer does a good job of getting his team yes. to play with a chip on their shoulder. Sometimes he invents reasons <laughs> to get it fired up and other times. Oh, Cook threw it and it's picked. Diving pick by Tyvis Powell. Now they're going to rule incomplete. And Nicky thought he had it. Cook's leg was being grabbed as he delivered it. What an attempt by Powell. And look, again, that defensive line got pressure on him. Powell, I think. As he comes down, it's a matter of whether or not he got his hands under that football before it hit the ground. He thought he had it. And the ball did appear to hit the ground. His hands were on, on, kind of on the side of the ball. It was an incomplete pass. The previous play is on the further review. Again, the ruling incomplete, so I'm not sure there's emphatic evidence to overturn that. But these Ohio State DBs have had one heck of a night. They have great hands. Apple did drop a sure pick early. This would have been a circus pick yeah. for Powell. Yeah, but you're right about the pressure. Bennett and Washington both got in there. That would have been a heck of an effort, but Cook had to get rid of the football because of that defensive line applying the pressure again. But you look at the you look at Connor Cook and he's put up some numbers at this point. He's actually 276, but it doesn't feel like that typical Connor Cook night when you look at Tony Lippett who has four catches for 48 yards. They've targeted him nine times and he only has four catches. Saskar rules expert Dave Katai is watching the replay that Steve Newman is looking at next door. Dave, what, what do you see? Enough to overturn this or do you think it'll stand? I think it's going to stand as an incomplete pass. The bottom of the ball hits the ground. You can see the ball move a little. There's certainly, in my opinion, isn't enough evidence to refuse, reverse it to an interception. I think it's going to stand at the very least. You watch these Ohio State DBs. If you look at tape and you see guys who have great ball skills. They can track the ball and when they get their hands on it, Despite Apple's easy drop before, they usually make the pick. After further review, the ruin on the field stands. It's an incomplete pass. Second down. It's also a defense, Kirk, that has limited big plays from all opponents. I know the competition hasn't been that tough, but only 17 20 plus yard plays all season. That's an FBS low, and they've done a pretty good job limiting Michigan State tonight in that department. Second and ten. Cook stays up, delivers into traffic. Catch made. First down at the 26 yard line. Mumphrey. Good job holding on there. Tony Lippett has been limited. Just 48 receiving yards on his four catches so far. Cook steps up, flips it short. 
flag is down as Langford collects it. That was in the holding zone. It has not been a good night for a very heralded and, and accomplished offensive holding. line. Offense, number 54. 10-yard penalty, first down. This offensive line is... You talked about the sacks, only five all year, which is third in the country coming into tonight. But you, you, when you look at film and people have blitzed him from every angle imaginable, they always seem to pick up the blitz, always seem to give Cook time to be able to make throws. And tonight, again, I think they've lost the battle for the most part up front. Not a big number of sacks, Kirk, but that's their third holding penalty. They'd, they'd be disappointed in this effort for sure, sure. collectively. Well, I, I said earlier, the offensive line, did a great job. Joey Bosley hasn't had his typical night. I mean, he came into the night having two sacks in the last three games at least. So he had it's like six and a half, seven sacks in the last three games. Tonight he's been pretty quiet. I think it's been more about Washington and Bennett in the middle doing most of the damage Good to the point. interior of Michigan State's offensive line. So second and 20, Cook delivers far side. Catch made, Burbridge. Can't escape. Tackled at the 30 by Recon McMillan. Third down. A lot of the crowd has emptied out here in East Lansing. There's a flag after the play. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 16 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. That'll move Michigan State closer. Urban won't feel comfortable yet. No. Up 18. No, not at all. I mean, it, you know, and that goes for any coach, let alone Urban Meyer with his intensity. Bennett's trying to get off the field. He is slow. He, you can see him. He had to, took a knee and had to get him off the field. Cook delivers. Kings retreats. Still alive. Fighting. Garrett King on his feet down near the goal line to the one yard line slippery play by the receiver They had him trapped in the backfield Again, he plays wide receiver, but he has the ability of a running back and it, he gets out there and it, Like a couple Ohio State defenders thought he might have been down and he just kept going Langford cuts it back barrels into the end zone and while a bunch of Spartan fans have headed for the exits Michigan State still fighting PAT will cut the lead to 11. 520 to play. You'd think they'd have to try an onside kick here. The defense yeah, certainly hasn't stopped Ohio State. No, they haven't. Might as well give that a try. You still, still have three timeouts remaining. It's almost still risky two, to kick it away. And it's still a two possession game. No. Down 12. Try to get it to 10 yeah. here. Let them kick the PAT to make it a. 11 point game. Interesting decision. Bat it down. If you just kick the point, then a touchdown two point conversion and a field goal would tie it. Sitting on 12 now. Sean Frazier batted that pass down. Now you're looking at two touchdowns. Yeah. This, this touchdown, again, the heart from Michigan State. Set up by Kings here, not giving up on a play. Could see him wiggling. I thought he might take it all the way to the end zone. And they get the ball back into the sure hands of Jeremy Langford and that big offensive line. This Michigan State team, the defending Big Ten champions, Rose Bowl champions, will not go away. Monday night, Panthers and Eagles served by Applebee's. You see Andrew Norwell, former Ohio State offensive lineman, one of three Buckeye rookie offensive linemen starting in the NFL. Part of that group last year that came up short collectively at Indy against this team, and now this rebuilt offensive line with the quarterback Barrett filling in at the last minute just before the season begins for Miller is doing something that veteran group could not do. Spartans kick it deep, no onside kick. So Barrett and company will take over with 520. And Alabama now trailing LSU. Delahousie with a field goal seconds ago to give the Mad Hatter a three point lead. Half, half the top 10 would go down. Alabama doesn't come back, and the Spartans can't face a furious rally here. 
K-State losing to another top 10 team in TCU. But if that holds, Kirk, Mississippi State has got to go to Tuscaloosa, the only SEC team without at least two losses. Wow. Potential. Can you imagine thinking, waking up today, the potential of Auburn and Alabama both getting knocked off. I mean, there was a shot, of course, with Alabama going to Death Valley. Elliott hammers ahead. Well, how will the committee evaluate that? Mississippi State goes to Tuscaloosa next week. They got to win the Egg Bowl in Oxford. Does it even really matter for the division title for Mississippi State, right? That's right. <laughs> got a huge lead. 5.15 to play here in East Lansing. Chris Cotter in studio. You heard Chris talk about the field goal. How did De La Husi get in range to kick it for LSU? T.J. Yeldon fumbled inside his own 10-yard line. LSU recovered. They kicked the field goal. Bama has the ball now, but trailing by three. Chris, Kirk? Chris, thank you. LSU doing it their way. <laughs> Low-scoring upset as underdogs against Ole Miss. Same blueprint, trying to finish off Bama, which is trying to, to drive and tie it, perhaps. That was a fun night. Oregon beginning to pull away against Utah for that crazy play. But the Utes could have taken a 14-0 lead. Reminder that the semifinal games in this new format take place in Pasadena and in New Orleans. The Rose Bowl game is in the Northwestern Mutual. The All-State Sugar Bowl, a doubleheader on ESPN on New Year's Day. The two winners feeding into that national championship game, AT&T Stadium, January 12th. So you have one and four and two and three playing. And I think a lot of people were surprised when we were talking about this. If, you know, let's just say, for argument's sake, if the Big Ten champion doesn't get into the top four, they're so used to going to the Rose Bowl, they wouldn't go to the Rose Bowl. No. They, they would not. They would either be looking at the, what, Fiesta Bowls out there, the Orange, Bowl. Orange Bowls out there. Cotton Peach. Cotton Bowl, yeah. Peach. Big difference, though, right? Playing yeah. for a yeah. spot in the championship game in Pasadena, perhaps. Yeah. We need the Big Ten and not going for the Rose Bowl. Ohio State trying to convert on third and three. What else? Barrett straight ahead. And of course, he converts. This Kirk, it's remarkable, this guy. I mean, every, every Ohio State fan was deflated, disappointed. Miller goes out. You figure there goes the season, right? Hardly. This wow. guy, I think he's the all Big Ten quarterback. Uh, without a doubt, the way he's playing tonight, uh, I, I love the look in his eyes. And for a young guy, he's got a look about him with, again, it's the numbers that are impressive, but it's the way he's doing it, the poise in which he's playing in this environment. It's almost you'd think he's a senior, just the way he plays and the way he carries himself. Every third down, he seems to have the right answer. Offensive line. Giving him time to be able to execute, whether it's been the run or the pass, has been a big part of his success as well. Eric pitches it near side. Marshall gets two nice blocks on the edge and falls down at midfield. He's been lies ahead for Ohio State. Minnesota playing good football. They hammered Iowa would have been Floyd of Rosedale. That's up next weekend. Home games against Indiana and of course team up north as they call the maize and blue in Columbus. And if things play out on the Indy again for the Big Ten championship game against perhaps Wisconsin or Nebraska. For Ohio State they had tonight and they have the game in Indianapolis to show the committee who they are and whether or not they're deserving. Elliot wins the ball tightly. Minnesota would be considered a quality win. The Gophers did go out of conference yeah. and get hammered by TCU, but they played good football in the Big Ten season. They seem to be getting better and better with Jerry Kill. It's a well-coached team. They looked good again today. But, but again, I, I think Ohio State is a team you you have to look at how they've improved themselves, where they were against Navy. Think about losing four offensive linemen, three of which are now starting in the NFL as rookies. And, you know, you lose your starting quarterback. You've got 11 days to try to get it together for Navy and then Virginia Tech. Think about how much they've improved from that chaos and that 
disappointment of losing their leader for your starting quarterback in Braxton Miller. They've got to be one of the most improved offenses from week one or two to now into November of anybody in the country. Michigan State spending a timeout. You talk about a contrast in emotions on this field. A couple weeks ago, Michigan came in here and the Spartans just absolutely dominated their rival. Make it six out of the last seven. Michigan playing a little stake in the field. The Spartans took great offense and dropped the hammer on them two weeks later. The anticipated collision, Michigan State fans feeling good about themselves, so was their team. Humbling loss tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. This is the game that everybody was bracing for because there just hasn't been that that the big competition and the opportunity is there. So you know, in the SEC, you see them weekly. And in the Big Ten, you got to wait for for a few weeks. And this is a chance. Michigan State came in, chance for them to say we're tired of being down there, hitting that ceiling at eight. We're going to show against a good opponent like Ohio State who we really are. So they put their best foot forward. But Ohio State and Urban Meyer came in with a plan on both sides of the ball. I'll tell you, they deserve all the credit in the world for the way they came in and the intensity in which they played tonight. Barrett tries to get the corner again. It's like everything all season long, they've been waiting for this moment to show what they can do. They had to survive a double overtime game at Penn State. And the Lions scored 17 in a row to, to force overtime and, and then scored right away in the top of the first in overtime. Buckeyes don't get a touchdown. The dream ends there in Happy Valley, basically. And I really believe because the way they had to win that game collectively, the offense, the defense, the special teams, everybody had a hand in it. Talking to some of the coaches and players that the post-game celebration in that locker room, pretty emotional. There was, you know, the offense and defense guys hugging each other. They really felt that that was a turning point, even though it became a scare, and because that game went into overtime in the second half. A third down conversion for Ohio State makes it six for six in the second half. The Ford wrap-up show after the game with Chris Cotter will detail what's going on around the country. Barrett, 300 yards passing even the three touchdowns. He's run for 86 yards and two touchdowns. You can't ask anything more of a quarterback. Calm, poised leadership on top of that. I would say almost a flawless performance. Like I said, again, remember this guy didn't play football for almost two years until this year with that torn ACL in his senior year, redshirted last year. I, again, I, his face and, the, and how mature he, he kind of approaches the game. Elliott doesn't really want to get out of bounds, falls down. The clock continues to roll here. It'll be third down. That might be his greatest quality, actually, is is how he carries himself without having a ton of a ton of reps and ton of experience as a freshman. He's just become an extension of Tom Herman and Urban Meyer and what he's trying to do is understanding. We said, what are the keys for him being able to go out and play so well? Preparation. He, they said he strives to be so good. He wants to be excellent. He doesn't just say it. He preps Monday through Friday to try to put himself in a position to have answers to every challenge that he might face from a defense. He was about third string in the spring. Thought he'd be the holder this season. Thought that would be his big responsibility. Holding for the kicks. Yeah. With, with Miller, of course, is He was just trying to make sure he beat out Cordell hand. Jones the the, for the backup to that. Braxton Miller. I also thought when Tom Herman said he's gotten to a point where he's figured him out. He said, you know, I'll, I'll talk to him about what's important. And he'll say, hey, don't be perfect. Just be you. Don't be perfect, just be you. Because early in the year, he felt he was a little hesitant. He was trying to overanalyze, trying to be too perfect. So now he just has a little ritual that he does with him, talks to him about his reads, his keys, literally right before he goes out for the, for the, the beginning of the game. And then he says, just don't be perfect, just be you. It's a lot of Buckeyes on you know, the helmet. They had to be pretty clean before the season. He's earned every one of them. His dad, 25-year career in the Army, but he said, his mom was really the disciplinarian in the family. Joe, you've known him as Joe if you knew him in grade school. He said he got to high school and became JT. And JT, the MVP tonight, outplaying Connor Cook. It was Ohio State's collective effort here. 
Makes a resounding statement of the committee. Here it throws it downfield. That'll stop the clock. It'll be fourth down with 39 seconds to play. Alabama, by the way, we tell you this as a service to the viewer. After LSU took the lead, kicked the ball out of bounds on the kickoff, drove down, kicked a tying field goal. So they're headed for overtime there. Chris Carter will keep you posted and all of that stuff at 39 seconds from now. And what are the odds of that with the way their kicking game has cost them in some big games the last few years? They had no timeouts. Yeah. <laughs> McCarron did it a couple of years ago down there in Baton Rouge, that heroic touchdown drive. Blake Sims with no timeouts to work with. Gets the tide in position to kick the tying field goal and don't put a fork in Bama just yet. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Michigan State, the night that began with such energy in this place ends with a mostly empty stadium and what will be a 12 point loss. Where do you move Baylor up? They hadn't had a road win against a ranked team since 1991, fell 14 3 down and a 45 zip run to close it out. Arizona State put 55 on the Irish with help of some turnovers. They go back to work and try to win the Pac-12 South. So some challenges ahead for Arizona State. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Florida State, slow start again today against Virginia, but pulled away and win 34 to 20. I think a lot of people are still wondering if that will ever catch up to them. They At play Miami. the Canes yeah. next week. And Athletically, anyway, that'll be probably the toughest game that they have left on their schedule. Ducks kind of, up by 14 and a half times, excuse me. I was going to say Duke Johnson and the, and the Canes. Brad Kaya has become a, a different guy. You want to give me your top four right now, or are you going to wait till? I want to see what I like to see what Alabama, Alabama does. does. No, that's fair. Yeah. No, that's fair. Don't look now, but Cameron Johnston is in the punt. <laughs> we haven't seen him in a long, long time. I thought they, I thought they let him shower. No, this is his second effort of the night. And Urban Meyer, arms in the air, and a big smile. Hey, they can't erase the pain of losing that big game in Indy. He didn't talk a lot about payback, but this is very, very satisfying. Buckeyes still unbeaten in this stadium since 99. Pretty hard to believe. Look at him. I mean, look at the emotions from Urban Meyer. He's been waiting a year for this matchup to take on Michigan State. I told you he gave me a forearm shimmy on the field before the game about knocked me down. You could tell there was some intensity in him early for this game. Cook the price and they pitch it off. <laughs> Biggs pitches it off again and Langford finally ends up with it after all that. He makes the 26 yard line. Michigan State will point to a holding penalty to nullify a Langford touchdown run that would have put them at 14 points at that time in the second quarter. That's right. Yeah, they were really, we talked at a break. Michigan State self scouted and felt that they needed to break some tendencies and some uncharacteristic mistakes from the Spartans today for sure. Not just the penalties, but just some of the decisions we saw from them. Just not what we've typically seen. And that, that's partly. Michigan State and a lot to do with the team that they play the Ohio State front the defense the secondary during Grant locked up with Tony Lippett Ohio State defense even though they gave up 37 points they, they did a very nice job in some key moments in this game of defending Connor Cook Ezekiel Elliott you saw the hug with Meyer there 154 yards for the tailback and two touchdowns Cook delivers and it's across the 40 for a first down. Where do, the, where do the Spartans go from here? They had that loss in Eugene, had been perfect in the Big Ten. It isn't over, but the Ohio State would have to lose a couple of games. Right, right. Final play. Lippitt, very, very quiet evening, just shoved out of bounds. Meyer. Gets the bath. He won't mind that in a chilly night. What a stuff JT Barrett was. Get the handshake. It might be brief. It was. Not the warmest of friends. 
Not the warmest of nights. <laughs> that was good. That was a direct, Excellent execution. Direct hit. I wonder if Barrett did that. That was perfect execution. <laughs> He's wet and sticky, but Meyer is with Heather. We're trying to get for Coach Atal, but Coach, in the meantime, congratulations. What does this victory in this environment with the stakes so high say about Ohio State? It was a great, uh, a great environment against an excellent football team, and that was, uh, I made the comments before about when you get two teams that control line of scrimmage like that, two sledgehammers. So I want to say, I give credit to Michigan State, but our guys played their tails off tonight. What? In what ways does this win sort of help avenge a loss and erase the memories of last year's Big Ten championship loss? Oh, yeah, you'll never forget that. And But once again, I mean, that's part of the game. You have two good teams playing, and uh, but we'll never forget tonight. You admitted concern this week about your young team, your inexperienced team. How did you get them to excel in this environment? Well, that, uh, the future is bright at Ohio State. There's a young team that just played a pretty veteran team, and they, they came out on top. So the uh, future is real bright. And what about your young quarterback, JT Barrett, came in? I mean, what sort of maturation process did you see before your eyes? Uh, I just saw him grow up, and uh, he's, a, he's a good leader. He's a tough guy, and uh, I love him to death. Coach, on a night where... <laughs> We'll let, we'll let you enjoy, Coach. Congratulations. Let's get you a towel. Get that orange Gatorade off. JT, congratulations. So much talk about avenging last year's loss. You said you felt helpless last year because you were a red shirt. Now this is your team. You're the leader. How did you help erase that memory for your teammates? Uh, just come out here and just do my job. That's what we talk about all week. Uh, don't worry about your other brother's job. Uh, make sure you have the trust in them that they're going to do their job, and I just got to do mine. How did you come in with so much on the line, so much pressure, so much talk all week, play in this environment and, and really lead this team and not play at all like a freshman? Where did that confidence come from? Uh, just preparation. Uh, we've been going at this for a long time, uh, preparing for Michigan State. Uh, so I mean, it's been since like the spring, so just preparation and having the confidence to come out and play. I know you've been focused on this game, but just to let you know, a lot's gone on in college football today. Half the top 10 down, major shakeup. What kind of message does this win send to the playoff committee? Um, I'm not sure. I think they uh, just now recognizing that we were able to play football with the best of them. And uh, I mean, that's all we try to come out and do each and every week. JT, what kind of advice did you get from Braxton Miller this week about tonight's game? Uh, just calm down, uh, take it all in. You know what the defense is going to do. Just settle down and just play the game. Well, that certainly showed. Thanks so much, JT. Good, thank you. Buckeye Zero finally able to join his brothers there, surrounded by the band in the corner of Spartan Stadium that is scarlet and gray, enjoying a sweet win. OHIO, oh my, what a statement by JT Barrett and the Buckeyes. They do take command of the East. It's a virtual two game lead over Michigan State. They, of course, have the tie break. Games coming up. With Michigan, they go cross division to play at Minnesota next week. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the talk about Ohio State throughout the last five or six, seven weeks has been they lost to Virginia Tech. It's been like an anchor tied around their ankles, and everybody wanted to see them against a great opponent. Well, now they played a great opponent in their stadium, and they were able to walk away with a very convincing win. It, as you said, Chris, it'll be interesting to see how the committee evaluates Ohio State's resume now and comparing it with all the other one-loss teams. My guess is they'll jump up significantly up into the top ten after all the other upsets that we saw. More work to do. They still need style points, to use that Absolutely. phrase, and perhaps some help. But Ohio State, 568 yards, seven touchdowns as they pull an upset, beat the Spartans by 12 on Michigan State's home field. Tonight's game produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley for Kirk and Heather. This is Chris Fowler saying good night from East Lansing, where Ohio State makes a strong statement. On a busy night, time for the Ford Wrap-Up Show. Back to the studio and Chris Cotter.